Oh, no problem. Yeah, what's you guys film when you're out on the street? Why wouldn't we be allowed to film? Let me say this. Let me say this. The thing is that we have people that definitely be coming this way. And what you're doing is you're blocking, you're blocking it. Oh, that's, yeah, that's why I stood right here. There's no expectation to privacy in a public area. Just, if, just if you guys were inside, that'd be different. I can do that. Welcome to Street Apologist Radio. We are going to kick this special show off with uh, about nine minutes or so of a previous video. Very relevant to today's subject. Today is Sunday, April 12, 2020. A little bit after 8 o'clock here in Phoenix, Arizona. We're going to be discussing the recent death of Jermaine Grant, a.k.a. Tazadakia of the ICGGC. And here I am in front of their headquarters in New York City. Just a quick Bible study. You like the Bible, right? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, Bible study. Colossians 2, 16 through 19. Here's what the Apostle Paul says through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, don't let anyone judge you in regard to food and drink or in the matter of a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of what was to come. The substance is Christ. Let no one condemn you by delighting and ascetic practices and the worship of angels, claiming access to a visionary realm. Such people are inflated by empty notions of their unspiritual mind. He doesn't hold on to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and tendons, grows with growth from God. Now here we are in front of the ICGJC. It's a cult. They move from 1 West 125th Street, and now this is the new location over here at 1941 Madison. And this scripture is a perfect scripture that debunks a lot of what they believe and a lot of uh, the heresy that you can find when you study their history. So let me break down what I mean. Starting at Colossians 2 verse 16, it says, Don't let anyone judge you in regard to food or drink. So somebody says, hey, don't eat that, and tries to judge you as if it's a biblical matter. Paul says, don't let them do that. This group does that. Or in the matter of a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. Paul lists three things there. You see that? Festival, new moon, or a Sabbath. All three of those things, this group would judge you. For example, if you don't hold a certain Old Testament fe festivals and practices, they'll say, hey, what's up? Why aren't you doing it? You're not keeping the law. The Sabbath, certainly. They say you have to keep it their way. So they do what Paul says, don't let another man do. But well, watch this. Why does Paul say that? Verse 17, these are a shadow of what was come. Those things are beautiful and good, but they pointed forward to something better. The old covenant is inferior to the superior new covenant, the book of Hebrews says, because we have a better mediator and it's permanent. So check this out. These are a shadow. So it's like, here's the man. He's, oh, go ahead. Here's the man. He, he's a shadow, right? But here's the actual man. You don't talk to the shadow. You don't look at the shadow. You don't focus on the shadow. You focus on the man making the shadow. Hebrew Israelism focuses on the shadow and forgets the man. And the man in this case is the God man, Jesus Christ. These are a shadow of what was to come. Hence, it's already come. The substance is Christ, meaning everything points towards Jesus Christ. And they should know that because the name of their group is the Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ. Then here's what it says. Let no one, so no one can do this, condemn you by delighting in ascetic practices. These are practices that deny something that God has made that's okay. And the worship of angels, here's the interesting part right here. The worship of angels, claiming access to a visionary realm. Look at that, Ariah, who still worships and attends here. He says he had an angelic vision about Lashawan Kodash, the language they speak, which is nowhere to be found on the pages of scripture. He said he had an angelic vision about the 12 tribes chart, which is their breakdown of who they believe are the modern day Hebrew Israelites. He said he had an angelic vision where an angel told him that a lot of things that his own father taught before he passed, Peter Sherrod was his name, Yaikwab, a lot of the things that Peter Sherrod taught to Ariah and the school were wrong. So an angelic vision comes and says, hey, some of that stuff that you got earlier was actually wrong multiple accounts of angelic visions. The guy who leads the school says he had some type of visitation or vision where God revealed to him that he was the Holy Spirit. I don't think an angel was involved with that one, but they're at Mount Olive, they say. 
So this is a common part of the practice. So we got we to gotta look at the scripture and say, what's the Bible say about this type of behavior, right? Let no one condemn you by the lighting and ascetic practices and the worship of angels. Now, there's not a worship of angels, but there is reports of angels that supposedly give new doctrine. That's contrary to the scripture, right? Claiming access to a visionary realm. So only I have this. As my special role, only I have this. That's the claim they make, right? But if it goes against scripture, the Bible says in Galatians, you got to say, damn that. Let it be damned, anathema, let it be cursed, right? Such people are inflated by empty notions of their unspiritual mind. So their mind is carnal, it's not spiritual, and they have these empty notions, meaning there's nothing to it. These are simply their own ideas. Clearly, when you study Lashawan Kodash, which I have numerous videos on, clearly when you study the 12 tribes chart, you'll see it's an empty notion. Oh, sorry. Oh, no problem. Of an unspiritual mind. And so we got to ask what the deal is with that. The reason is because they don't hold on to the head who is Christ and whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and tendons, grows with growth from God. So here's what we got to look at. We have a situation where people are holding on to men instead of Christ. They're holding on to men instead of the God of the Bible. You... Are you gentlemen bothered by us filming here? Are you gentlemen bothered by us filming here? The thing is this, that he can stop filming. Well, yeah, but I mean, he's not required to. Well, then um, then there's no conversation between us. I don't I don't wish to be filmed. You okay. Have a conversation with okay, me. yeah, you won't be in the camera or anything. Oh, well, well. Yeah, what's, you guys film when you're out on the street. Why wouldn't we be allowed to film? Do me a favor, do me a favor. The, the thing is that we have people that have to be coming this way. And what you're doing is you're blocking, you're blocking. Oh, that's, yeah, that's why I sit right here. I got you. But you don't want to, but you guys film other people when you're out on the street, right? You know what I'm saying? And you don't really get their permission, do you? Those people out on the street, you don't get their permission when you're filming them. You know what I'm saying? It just seems like it's, it's fair. But really, we're just doing a little Bible study. That's, that's really all we're doing. Because, you know, a lot of the doctrine from the school is said to come from angelic visitations to Ariya. And so we just wanted to break down how the Bible says that people that have these claims of angelic visitations, they're really just having empty notions of an unspiritual mind. Yeah, but it's a public sidewalk, my man. Yeah, yeah. There's no expectation to privacy in a public area. Just, if, just if you guys were inside, that'd be different. I can do that. It's a public sidewalk and, and I'm standing in the public. I can, I can do that. You're right, you can. That's, right. that's fine. I, well, no one's going to stop you. I just wonder why, though. Same way how you can stand there. I can stand there. I know, I know. I, I'm just saying why, though. In all, in all seriousness. So you guys' policy is not to talk to anybody in front of the school? Can I ask you a question there? Pretty soon, everybody, pay attention. Well, brother, the Bible asking. says in 1 Peter 3.15, you should always be ready to give a defense for what you believe. So John chapter uh, 14 says this. Right here. John here chapter 14. This is a powerful question. If you love me, you will keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor. And that's where the word comforter comes from. It's parakletos in the Greek. To be with you forever. So here's my question. Is Jermaine Grant going to be with you forever? If Jermaine Grant can't be with you forever, then how could he be the other comforter? Because this says, I'll give you another comforter or another counselor, Paracletos. But you know Jermaine Grant won't be with you forever. And then it says he is the spirit of truth. But do you believe that he's the spirit of truth? Then it says the world is unable to receive him. This is important right here. It says because it doesn't see him. But yet we can see Tazadakia. Now, if we can see Tazadakia, how could he be another comforter? Because it says right here, the world doesn't see him or know him. But it says, but you do know him because he remains with you and I will be in you. You, you, guys, are, you guys are interrupting a religious observation you have to leave from me. I'm letting you know that. You're interrupting a religious observation, sir, and you have to leave it. This is a church, okay? Yeah, but this is a public sidewalk. Okay, this is a church. You guys are being very disruptive. We didn't come inside. Brother, I know you believe in this doctrine. You're out in the rain. You have, you have garb that signifies your commitment to it. You gotta ask yourself, are, are you, is this right? Are, let me ask you something. I'm listening. Are you right? 
The Word of God is right. Are you right? The Word of God is right. By God's grace, I hold and faithfully to what? it. Guess what? Yes, sir. You can't even hold the Word of God. Why is that? Right. You dismissed. And so are you, sir. I didn't even say that. You didn't even ask me that. <laughs> I, I got. Yeah, you I didn't give me a shot. Just, Dang, bro. You, bro. But I gotta be honest, man. Just, you know, you know, you know, and, but you know what? That's Adam Coleman, everybody. You are still. You got still. Why are you being so interrupted? If what we're doing is so. You interrupted me when I. What are you doing is so close. Why did you take so much time out of your busy schedule to come down here? How do you know I have a busy schedule? Okay, bro, why, what, why, you, why, what are you doing? You know why would you try to incite a riot? Incite a riot? Yeah, why are you causing a problem? How am I incite a riot? You know you're causing a problem. Is supposed to be an F-Lot? Listen, if you never came out, would we why be talking to you right now? Why would you cause a problem? Would we be talking to you right now? All you're trying to use is physical intimidation, getting in my space, but you can't answer a basic question about the comforter. Read the Bible, okay, gentlemen? Read the Bible. Thanks. All right, be blessed. Be blessed. And your intimidation won't work forever, though. Appreciate your patience. Try to stay out of the rain, bro. So, uh, we're here at 1941 Madison in Harlem, New York. We're at 1 West 125th. Yeah, yeah. His move. These are the original Hebrew Israelite school out of the 1 Westers. And uh, all I did is open up the Bible to Colossians. We're having a little Bible study out of the walkway on a public space. And three men came and approached us and asked us to leave and stop recording. Try to put the hand in front of the camera. Acted like he was going to take my phone away at one point. But all I, I wasn't, well, nobody was protesting. We didn't have signs or shirts. We were just simply doing a little Bible study. And I asked them a few questions, which they wouldn't answer. I mean, what's your, that's, that's a real experience. What's your experience? What's your yeah, thought about recap, that? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, like you said, they came out in front of it. They were obviously uh, upset that we were there. You know what I'm saying? They said that we were interrupting their religious service. Mm -hmm. Said they would go, you know, go ahead and call the police. And like, you know, like my man Vocab said, he was giving them the scriptures, man. He was giving them the scriptures. You know, like while he was doing this thing on the video, I pulled a couple guys aside, was able to talk to them just about just this false identity, man. Like they, you know, they, even on the uh, on the on the front of it, they have all these different tribes listed and you know this real strong adaptation to who they believe they are. And I'm like, look, you know, at the end of the day, there's nothing you can say about yourself that's more powerful than what the God, what God already said about Amen. you in his word. You know what I'm saying? You're right. made in the image of God, in his likeness. Jesus died for your sins. And Jesus is, is God in the same sense as the Father is God. And at the end of the day, if you're diminishing that, you know, you're already out of, out of pocket, biblically speaking. So, you know, we gave him that word, man. And, uh, you know, they weren't really, you know, feeling it. Asked us to leave. I gave him my information. They said they were getting in contact with me. I gave him my information. So, you know, we'll see what happens. We really pressed them on their doctrine that the leader of their school is the Holy Spirit made manifest and they were not interested in asking any questions. They told us we were dismissed. Yeah, it's like you pointed out. I mean, like yeah. you know, the, the scripture about Jesus said, I'll send you a, a comforter to be with you always. Right. And, uh, you know, obviously the comforter, uh, Jermaine Grant rather, mm -hmm. will not be with them always. And they right. couldn't respond to that whatsoever. So, you know, that's when he said you're dismissed. He wasn't trying to hear it. Right. And, uh, you know, you stand on that word, man. So, you know. Is it the ball is in the court? They said they're gonna contact us. We we'll see what happens. We're here for a yeah, couple more days. You got their information. You, you gave me your information. Gave my information. You yeah, passed yeah, on yeah. information right so, there. You know, we we'll see what the ball's in the court. I offered we'll a free. Offered a free book. They weren't interested in that, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. so uh, now we're gonna go on to the next location. This is an adventure, but ultimately he said, "Why are we here? Love compels us." Because he said, "Why are you here? Right. Love compels us. That's what. That's what it is. Simple, plain and simple. Love and doctrine, man. No doubt. All right. Yeah. Nope. Let's begin, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. <laughs> All right, you guys want me to call a boo? All right, let's call a boo. Welcome back to Street Apologist Live. Usually don't start a, you know, a program off like that but the day uh, we did I thought it was important and uh, you know we we showed us asking the questions out there at 1941 Madison and uh, specifically I asked hey if uh, the leader of the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ if he truly is you know as as they say if he really is as they say the um, <clears throat> God sent comforter, then how does he fulfill these scriptures about always be being with them? And of course, obviously now today as we discuss this situation in which uh, Jermaine Grant has uh, left, left this plane of existence, you know, he is no longer walking the earth. 
Uh, obviously, it's a very pertinent, relevant question. To help us answer that question, we got a fellow researcher who's been dealing with these types of things with the ICGJC for decades now. My man. My man, Abu Kamer. How you doing, bro? Very good. Very good. Good evening and, uh, and happy Easter to everyone, at least for those who celebrate uh, Western Easter. <laughs> <laughs> happy Res- Resurrection Sunday. Precisely. Now, Abu, you wanted to give a caveat before we start the show. I'll let you do it because you're used to groveling for Hebrew Isla- to Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> oh, so I'll, let you, uh, I'll let you do the groveling. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, I, I hope it's not groveling. But in all sincerity, I just want to say that while we're exploring the subject, of course, we don't – this is not intended as any way uh, mocking or deriving joy from his very unfortunate passing. We do find it sad. You know, and, and I, I hope that's clear because I, I imagine some of this discussion will be uncomfortable for some, but it's not intended as any way disrespecting the sad passing of this man, which is indeed a sad thing. 100% agreed. And so, you know, I'm just teasing you, bro. You know, of course, of course. No, it's all, all in good fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, uh, I played a video in the beginning of me asking the question that I feel is very relevant today. Which is, uh, you know, how is uh, this man, how can he be the, the uh, God's sick comforter when we know he will not always be around? And, of course, now that is a very uh, pertinent question, and uh, that, that's not, I'm not the first person to have asked that question. And uh, here we are now, 2020, and it is official. We wanted to wait. I remember uh, you and I have been going back and forth about this uh, throughout the, the kind of the past week or so, and uh, now we're going to give people the information as well as play some videos and talk about its relevance. So, Abu, uh, this is quite a wild, wild ride. Um, Jermaine Grant came into the One West School when he was uh, a teenager, maybe 14 years old according to some accounts. Right. Yeah, that's uh, that's the exact thing. Everybody, give me a one if you can hear Abu. I want to double check here to make sure that you can hear Abu. Uh, he said a few things, and so you should uh, be able to hear him by now. Let me know. But in, but in all seriousness, uh, we're, we're not doing this to revel or to... Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I, 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 got, I, I can work on that. I can work on that. All right, uh, we'll, we'll get that together. All right, uh... Uh, you know, we we, we, we are not uh, here to celebrate. That's not the point of this. But the point is to give you, um, whenever someone passes in any situation in life, right, um, it's, a, it's a chance to reflect back on what we know of the life and legacy. Obviously, humans only know so much. But uh, that's, what, that's what we're going to do now. And so we're asking a very important question. So <clears throat> with, with that being said, uh, Abu... What do you think uh, things are going to look like going forward, man? What, what, how significant is this to you? You know, this is quite a, quite a wild ride in his life. You know, what, what's your take on the significance of this? Hold on just a minute. I'm not hearing you yet, uh, appears. I need to switch back. All right, let's, let's, let's give it a shot again. All right, just a second here. Let me, let me, let me see. Let me see. Okay. All right, I got you back, bro. All right, I'm just, okay. I just, I, I don't want it to be where I have to have this, this logo up mm. on the screen the whole time. That's what I'm trying to eliminate. So let me, let me figure, all right, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, while I figure that out, talk about the significance of this, my man. It seems people are saying they still can't hear me, but nonetheless, oh, Patrick Hall can hear me. Everybody yeah, I got you back. I, I'm, I know, Excellent. I know what's going on. All right. Excellent. All right, so two things regarding the significance and also regarding where it's going in the future. Regarding the significance, Personally, I think it's immensely significant because, significant because it this is the leader of the largest One West, West group. Uh, it's arguably the original One West group, admittedly one that's gone through some evolution, but by virtue of the fact that it still holds one of the you know the ICUPK's uh, location at 1941 Madison and also still holds two of the seven heads, I think it has a rightful claim to being the original group despite the doctrinal evolution it underwent. And he was also a very significant figure within the history of One West, in my opinion. I mean, he's he was sort of a lightning rod for all the other groups. Many of the other groups were 
focused on him precisely because, at least for a time, he led the largest group and also he... Yeah, I want to clarify. I'm not sure if people caught that. I see GJC that Tazadakia, a.k.a. Jermaine Grant, led, was at one time the largest One West group and is sort of the official flagship uh, church out of all the branches because really... um, they're the ones with the the legitimate pedigree, despite whatever any else camp says. And we don't have a dog in this fight. Uh, whoever is legit is legit, and it's objectively ser- certain that ICGAC is the actual original One West camp, just transmutated. Now, with that being said, they are no longer the largest. They're probably floating, according to X members, around 1,800 members. No one knows for sure with these types of groups. But uh, Tazadaki would claim 5,000, and it seems during the heyday, and you can see that in the early aught Passovers, you can see evidence of that, where there's boys to men's and everybody else. You have a situation where they certainly were. And to a certain extent, uh, the other groups have been trying to imitate certain aspects of them ever since. And... And uh, we've got a situation now where IUIC is the largest, GOCC is probably right there as far as One West goes, mm-hmm. um, but they're still important. REI is still there, and as well as another man who was a seven head. So this is a Char. big deal, yeah, Char. Char. This is also a big deal, as indicated by the beginning of the video. Tazadaki was a man who claimed the title of the God Sent Comforter, which was uh, something that most other uh, Hebrew Israelites did not like or agree with, similar in the way they would not agree with the idea of General Yohanna of the, of the ISUPK being second only to Christ, as he claims. Or sometimes in GS, GMS videos, every now and then you'll catch them saying that the rightful leaders of all Israel are uh, Tahar um, and the other two gentlemen, Ar- Ariam Lob and I believe uh, Gabar, right? Is that who it is? That yeah, he, he rolls with on a regular basis. So uh, the, all these groups claim this to a certain extent. Um, but here you have ICGJC now leaderless because he, as of April 1st, 2020, succumbed to complications from COVID-19. So this is a very real thing, and we're going to play some clips, actually, of him speaking on COVID-19 a little bit here, which I think will put some of this in context. But this is a big deal. This is um, something none of us, I think, predicted or thought was going to happen. A lot of us knew he was on his way to being incarcerated because of sentencing, which was delayed multiple times for a prior crime uh, that he had committed, as well as Lincoln Warrington, another member there, you know, basically playing with the funds and whatnot. Uh, he was on his way to be incarcerated, but it ended up being in the hospital instead. And in that, in that, during that time, succumbed to COVID nineteen. He he is now dead, and they've confirmed it. Although they were a little slow in the process, and then since then they put up a letter on their website, put up a whole slew of videos on the internet, and even mm. updated their website, which I find. Uh, in a strange way, in my own head, one of the most inf- interesting things of all. Um, and so, shout out to the One Westers in the live chat. I see we have Chief Ephraim Amapa Guy. He is the gentleman, if you remember, who was leading the House of Israel group, who was uh, having a discussion, if we could say it that way, with the Covington <laughs> High School kids. He's from Brooklyn, I believe, and he's uh, PR. All right, what's up with you, man? I still want to get you on the show someday. I don't think he'll ever come on, um, but nonetheless, sh- shout out to him. He's saying they are following traditions of men. Uh, we might get into that. But, Abu, commentary on so what I'm saying. I'm trying to really get a lot out in the beginning. To, to the uninitiated, I want them to understand that this is a big deal for researchers uh, of this group, people who are counter call apologists like myself, all of that. It's a big deal sort of just in the history of new uh, religious movements, what scholars call NRMs. It's, it's a big deal. It's even made the paper. I'm going to read some articles here. So... Um, this is important, and there's a lot of questions uh, to be asked as we go forward. So, Abu, commentary on uh, some of the stuff I was saying, my man. No, I think you pretty much summed it up. I mean, he was the leader of what was for a time the largest group and the central One West group in many respects. They got more attention. There was a period where the ICGJC got more attention from other One Westers because you know, the, the different One West groups sort of have their own little rivalries. Some of them are more ecumen- uh, ecumenical than others, but there are a number of rivals that go there, and it seemed like Tazadaki was very much of a lightning rod within One West in that regard in the sense that he sort of garnered this – uh, I don't want to say hatred, but hatred in many respects, and almost universal hatred amongst the other groups that he was almost universally uh, reviled. And um, 
uh, so it's in that regard, it's significant that such a lightning rod from one West history has has unfortunately passed away, uh, and and also to see where the the central group, the original group, uh, is going to in what direction it's going to continue evolve to evolve now is the big question I would say. Yeah, um, no one knows now. The ICGJC themselves have made some interesting doctrinal adjustments uh, themselves the past. Um, now, decade or so, they're much closer to affirming some version of an orthodox understanding of mm. the nature of God than the other Hebrew Israelite groups. Um, they've taken on mm. some traits that that look quasi Eastern Orthodox or Roman Catholic. You know, small yep, things in absolutely. regards to iconography and some things like that. Uh, perhaps even and in the Ever Virgin Doctrine, which is a, a huge surprise for me. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So there's been some interesting things there. Um, they've kept uh, sort of the core a lot of ways. But, you know, doctrinal innovation has always been part of these One West groups, regardless of mm -hmm. what, what they say. I mean, uh, Arya wasn't always known to be, you know, um, people reincarnated, you know, John the Revelator. These things are revelations that came to existence. The 12 tribes chart wasn't always around. Lashawan Kodash wasn't always around. The 12 generals doctrine, if you want to call it that, or 12 shield generals, whatever it was, that wasn't always around. Uh, who Masha is in the reincarnation, that wasn't always around. We could go actually on and on to <clears throat> for quite a way of things that, that have radically changed in the sport, uh, the space of really people's lifetimes, and then even the leaders who came up with these doctrines or were at the flagship or uh, leading when these happen, they've they've themselves have changed in some pretty radical ways, such as Lahab, who uh, is sort of a oneness uh, guy in regards to Trinity, or Trinity, which means he doesn't hold to it, but in a lot of ways looks like some kind of oneness type of Christian, and mm. uh, he was one of the seven heads, and the list goes on and on. So. Fascinating stuff. Now, Tazadakia is dead. It really is true. Uh, I'm going to read this statement by the group, Abu. And then mm -hmm. as I do that, uh, do you want to say anything to kind of uh, walk it up? Well, just only that. So apparently he passed away on the 1st. Word of his passing first started to reach the Internet on the 3rd, which is uh, not the, this previous Friday, but the Friday before that. And it was in a state of rumor, and there even seemed to be one of the ICGJC's bishops and apostles, if, and that, I mean, that's an actual title within the church, at least initially, seemed to be waving it off as a quote-unquote disgusting rumor. And as uh, so the first person to break it was the mother of some of Tazadaki's children, and uh, she got waved off as a quote-unquote bitter baby mama, end quote. Forgive me for that. I know that's disrespectful, but that's what that was their words. And so initially it seemed like they were denying the rumors that were floating around the internet, and then this statement comes out on, I believe, the 8th, late on on the night of the 8th, uh, going into the 9th. So it was about eight days after his passing and about five days after we started hearing about it on the Internet. And uh, the, the website here is the comforter.info, correct? Info. Yep, yes, sir. Can you talk about some of the websites and web presence that they have at ICGC and don't have as I bring this up? Well, when he first started to come up, uh, the first website they had was the holyconceptionunit.org, and that was where they had their forum. This is back 2004, 2005, and that was like a lot of where their attention was. And then when he launched, uh, I'm guessing it was around 2007, maybe 2006, he launched his uh, world tour, as he called it. He wound up pretty much only visit them, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but ultimately his world tour was only him visiting already existing churches like Miami and Baltimore. And stuff like that, but nonetheless, he had a tour bus with his face on it, and it was had a world tour, as he called it. And it was uh, that was around the time when Comforter.info came out, and they had a wildly popular video, a viral video of him uh, talking with Mormons at the time, and that really helped the Comforter.info sort of take off as well. That was like their their sort of uh, premiere video, or their their flagship video, or their just their most popular video. That's for certain. I remember they had over a million hits on the website alone. Break it down one more time. Why we're why it's called the Comforter info. Oh, I'm sorry. It's called the Comforter info is because, in, it's because he claimed to be the Comforter, the you know the Paraclete that's spoken of in the 14th and 16th chapters of the Gospel of John. That was something he came out with. I'm guessing around 2003, maybe it was 2005. Uh, but yeah, 
that he had claimed to be the comforter predicted in John. And so, you know, I want to be careful how I word this. This is going to sound disrespectful, but I would say that the ICGJC started to take on the feel of, of something like a cult of personality, something uh, sort of how, you know, where it, it really began to focus on its central leader. And that's why even the website was a reference to him rather than to the church. You know? Yeah, and um, this is... Um it's it I, I i think but when you look at the history of all of hebrewism now i think honestly we could say that no one hebrew israelite has garnered more power than tazadakia perhaps with the exception of ben on me just because of the size and influence of the community there in demona or perhaps even you know, I'm not necessarily trying to compare him, but Yahweh bin Yahweh in Florida. As far as the amount of kind of strength and control and influence and numbers, um, he's right up there when it comes to all of Hebrew Israelism, as far as sort of the amount of centralized power and access to, to funds and things like that, and probably... Uh, mm -hmm. Right, yeah, I don't think a lot of people know that. But that's that's a fact. That's a reality. So now here we are on the website at thecomforter.info. And uh, I'm going to try to make it larger for you guys here in a second. Sorry, I know it's not as big as, as you would like. And the, the overlays on the top and the bottom, just so everyone remembers, those are mine. Those are not the, the, the things to get discount at Lagos and all that. That, uh, of course, is not part of their website. So now here we are. And um, let's take a look at this statement in regards to his passing. You may not be able to entirely read it, but I will read it to you. And here is what it says, ladies and gentlemen. Congregation of Israel, tonight we are reminded of the understanding taught to us by the Holy God sent Comforter. So you see essentially the blasphemous, even in regards to this, and the blasphemous uh, title even in the, in, in the wording, the, the way this, this statement begins. Holy Apostle and Chief High Priest, Tazadakia, in the DVD, never forget, 11-1-2016, where he told us that leadership has the responsibility to always be honest with you and make sure that you are informed, no matter how hard some things might be to hear, but you have a right to know. This, unfortunately, is one of those nights, and this message is not just hard to hear, but is, in fact, devastating for all true worshipers and believers in our Lord, our King and Savior, the Almighty God, Jesus Christ. Notice there, uh, they're willing to use Jesus Christ, as is in the church's name. And notice also they call him the Almighty God. Jehovah's Witnesses won't even do that. They just say, oh, he's Jesus, the mighty God, you know. Again, I'm not uh, saying that this is an orthodox organization. I'm just pointing that out in relationship to other One West Hebrews-like groups. There, oh, yeah. Yes, um... This, uh, therefore, with have very heavy hearts, we regretfully inform you that our beloved spiritual leader, the holy God sent comforter, holy apostle and chief high priest, Tazadaki, notice they got to put all those titles in there every time. I mean, it seems like this is the kind of thing, though, that Jesus uh, spoke, spoke against, to be honest, all these titles and all this. Oh man, I got, they're saying there's sound outs again. I'm 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 working on. It. I don't I don't know. I might have to, I might not like it when we're sharing screens for uh, the Skype, but I don't know why exactly. But I'll uh, I'll mess around with that and see what's what's going on. Let me see here. No input controls. I'll 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 get to it. I'll get I'll get to that. I'll get I'll get to that. Let me see here. All right, now let's see here. All right, continuing on here. I know you guys can't hear a boo. We'll work on that. We'll work on that. Uh, was confirmed to have COVID-19 and passed away last Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. 
It is a tremendous loss, no question. And unfortunately, due to the current restrictions put in place due to the coronavirus, we are prevented from coming together to comfort each other and say goodbye as we so desperately desire to do. This letter is uh, kind of sad in, in a lot of ways. Therefore, we ask that you please take the time to process this and review the video clips below to help remind us that this is absolutely not the end. We will see the Holy God sent comforter again soon. Now, that soon is um, odd, uh, to say the least. If they just said, we'll see him again, I could understand that in their theology. But the soon, huh. John eleven twenty five 25-26, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Chaos! And his demonic forces of darkness may think they got the victory. But we know the war is far from over. Satan made his move. And now we will patiently wait for the Lord's response. Until that occurs, we will continue to operate through the guidance and wisdom given to us by the Holy God-sent Comforter, Holy Apostle and Chief High Priest Hazadakia. And as he said, steady as she goes. With our deepest condolences, the Order of the Twelve Apostles. Let me see if um, you can be heard, and I'm going to mess around with some controls while you're, you're seeing. No, 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 I can tell, I can tell you're still not able to, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do uh, something else. Yeah, 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 I'm working on it. I'm, uh, I might, uh, it might be a situation where um, we can only get you... Let me see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off my camera. I don't think that's gonna help, but I'm gonna turn off my camera here and see what's going on. Okay, so this is a <clears throat> an interesting uh, statement in a lot of ways. Again, it's on the front of the website, and uh, you know it is uh, it's it's a sad thing to read. I think I I think a lot of us kind of see that we're we're not about you know reveling and and all that kind of stuff. It's just not the the way we want to operate as Christians, and so. Uh, we're saddened by this, mainly, you know, by the people still lost in this. You know, clearly there's a there's a serious spiritual warfare going on for the for the hearts of the people involved with this. So not good, not good. Okay, Abu, I'm gonna try one other thing. Uh, talk now. No, 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 no. So that means whenever we're screen sharing, uh, it's not gonna work. And so let me let me let me uh, flip back. All right, let's see. I'm going to flip back and then. All right, um, and see if you can be heard now. Okay, okay, okay. now try it, Babu. Go ahead and try it. All right, let me let me. Uh, we're not able to hear you for whatever reason. Um, it's uh, not breaking up everything. You're just I can hear you fine, but somehow it's not coming through to everybody else. Even though I've got all the volumes turned up and all that, I'm trying to still figure that out exactly what it is. I got everything turned up all the way, so um, I'm just trying to see what that could be. So Abu is saying that one member of the church is saying that um, uh, they could just be saying that basically in order f he basically have to go through everything that Jesus went through. And so you're saying by that he might want they're saying that he might resurrect? Well, I'm saying there's two pe there's two pieces to that. They two they put up So some members, 
some members are interpreting as as um, uh, that he will actually resurrect soon. That's what that's what you're saying, right? A lot more vague and open to interpretation. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, this is fascinating stuff. All right. Um, let me see here. Let's um. Let's uh, look here at some other things that, that, that I've got that I think are relevant. Uh, let's go back to the um, – we're going to go back now to the uh, website here. And we're at the comforter.info. This is the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ website. And so here we are looking at it. And uh, let me see here. Let me get rid of this little statement so we can see this. Okay, boom. All right, so uh, look again. This is this is updated. This is the the most kind of current I've ever seen the website be. Uh, it is it was uh, you know, and you, they're kind of eulogizing here him here. You know, the man of God. You know, so there's different articles you can read. It looks like oh, the Comforter Seal. I didn't actually wreck it. So he's got a, his own seal. Okay, uh, the Comforter Seal. That's uh, fascinating. All right, so concerning Hurricane Irma, well, that's old. That's from 2017, so these blog articles are still very old. To the congregation in Baltimore, Maryland, concerning the racial unrest and civil unrest, uh, quick statement regarding an earthquake in 2011. But here's what's new, as Abu is saying, and I think they can hear you now. Mm-hmm. We're find out, trying to find out what's, what's going on. This. The God sent comforter, holy apostle, and chief high priest, Tazadakia. So these are three new videos of him. And underneath each is a scripture, John 14, 16. And I'll pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, if you watch a GMS video about this, they will interpret this as um, the, the essentially that Jesus is saying he's going to bring the word of God. That's, that's what mm-hmm. I've heard them say, saying that the comforter is simply uh, the, the scripture or the Bible. That's the way a GMS would interpret uh, from the videos I've heard who, the comforter yep. anyway, because remember, they don't hold that the Holy Spirit is a personal being in the first place. You know what's, what I'm what's, interesting is, what's interesting about GMS is they've been saying that ever since Tazadaki came out as, you know, identifying as the comforter spoken of in John, mm-hmm. they quickly took the position that, no, the comforter is the, the Holy Scriptures, because as you said, they don't recognize the Holy Spirit as a person. Mm-hmm. What's interesting is, I don't know if you've noticed this, but GMS has adopted a triadic formula for how they start. You know, historically, One West has had this phrase, uh, uh, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, right? They say, uh, uh, they'll say their praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, uh, Rekach, uh, Rekach Wadash, they say. The Holy, so they slip the Holy Spirit in there, and it does beg the question. Actually, of, since you're mentioning that, let me play this this video that I love. Uh, me and K-Dub are hoping that every GMS video could actually begin like this. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, as far as the the intro that GMS gives. <laughs> Hold on, where is it? That's not it. Hold on. This is going to be the, the Shema. Mm-hmm. There you have uh, GMS with sort of their own version of the Shema. But go ahead, go ahead. You're, I, I'm worried you're getting a little bit into the weeds, but I'll let you continue on. No, that's all. It was just it was a bit of a segue, but it was only that, you know, while GMS has historically denied that the Holy Spirit is a person, it's interesting that they've adopted a triadic formula mm-hmm. at the start of all their videos. Yeah. Now, they, they no longer say simply, you know, uh, praise to the Father in the name of Christ. They do it to the Father in the name of Christ and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And they say it in Lashuan Kodash. And it's interesting because it begs the question, is that two persons and an impersonal force, two persons and a book? Like, what exactly is that triad they're referring right. to? And GMS, to those who don't know, is a rival Hebrew Israelite One West camp. And in fact, uh, Elder Tahar, the leader of them, he calls himself that title. Uh, they call him actually more titles than that. But he he was saying, you know, he feels bad on one hand about Tazadakia's, Tazadakia's passing. And then he went on to say, well, then again, he did have me jumped. 
Yeah. That, well, <laughs> eh, I, I was actually thinking of mentioning that, that these two different groups had a physical confrontation back in 2005. Yes, they and, did. It, and it even got mocked in that, uh, that rap video that you covered, uh, Straight Out of Hell. Yes, they did. And so there's bad blood uh, between GMS, for example. Uh, going all the way back with ICGDC, GMS are kind of critical of everybody, but they've definitely been especially critical of ICGJC, it seems, maybe even more than the other camps. Uh, I don't know. They seem to be on their radar more, something like that. And there was a, you know, kind of a famous physical confrontation, at least one that we uh, know of. And so Tahar was uh, mentioning that. Um, it's interesting to see the Hebrews of Light responses. Mainly GMS is reveling in it. I mainly hear GMS members, because I've watched a few videos, saying, hey, you're going to see more ICGJC members dropping dead if they don't get rid of this doctrine. And that uh, they, they read the letter, and they said, well, this is not Satan's move. This was the Lord's move. He's the one who killed Tazadakia, and he's going to kill uh, more of their members if they don't change their doctrine. That's what I heard a GMS members say. So we're not taking that tone. You wanted to add something, Mabu? No, I was going to say to, to as a, as a, an indication of how palpable GMS's hatred was for Tazadakia. GMS has historically had they they've done this routine where they have a picture of uh, you know white Jesus. They say it's quote unquote Caesar Borgias, Cesare Borgia. Mm -hmm. They would take a picture of white Jesus and put it on the sidewalk and have people stomp on it. The only other individuals who have had their pictures stomped on at a GMS camp, to my knowledge, are Tazadakia and Barack Obama. So that's a I think I a wanna, testament. To I want to be in that number. <laughs> yeah, we got we got to get to hard to get a picture of. All right, put it everybody, on go to change.org. What's the website where you can start petitions? And uh, everyone, I want you to please, please go ahead and see if I can get voted in to be one of the pictures that GMS will stomp live at a street camp. I, I am hoping <laughs> that will happen, and that's all I know I'll be at. And then after that, I can die. John 15, 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of Truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. So you notice you've got two of the verses uh, underneath these new videos that they're asking people to watch that are still big on this idea of he is the God sent comforter. Hebrews 5:12 yeah. for when the time for for when for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need the one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Want to comment on any of those? Uh well, real, real quickly, those aren't videos. The videos will be under Yeah, yeah, I'm scrolling yes, through them. Absolutely. Gotcha. Absolutely, those are indications that they're still holding to this to this doctrine that a that he's the comforter and b that the thing about the you know the, the meat and stuff like that that he brought all these new breakdowns. There's been a thing in the ICGJC where you know he would literally tell other members of the leadership that they were wrong in public in front of the congregation as to signify how you know how he's the only one with the truth. And there's a so I don't know if others have noticed this when you watch a lot of the videos in recent years. When he would be teaching, Shar and Arya would be in the background pretending to take notes. You know, they'd be sitting there with a with a Bible and a and a pad, and they'd be taking notes like you know, like students, like they're learning from him in real time. Uh, right. And so, those who don't know, uh, Shar is the other gentleman who is in the ICGJC, who is one of the was when the school was intact, one of the seven. Heads. The school, when it was together before all these splinters came out, uh, had seven heads in charge. <clears throat> Eventually, and uh, ta somehow Tazadakia basically overthrew, overthrew them and became in, in charge and changed the name and everything like that. Uh, but Shar and Arya stayed on, and so you can still see Shar and Arya even in some of these videos. I don't know if you'll be able to see them in some of the clips we're going to show. But let's find out. So I've got uh, some of these videos. Uh, which one I'm wondering, brother, which one kind of would you recommend uh, to huh. play here? Uh, the one, let's see, I can't see it on your screen, unfortunately, uh, so I don't recall the title. Are you able to scroll up a bit? Well, there's the uh, Vimeo one. All right, remember, you remember that? I think they're all on Vimeo, actually. The one that's on Vimeo is very interesting because it... Uh, it shows the different congregations, and it also has him talking mm -hmm. about COVID-19. That would be apparently the most recent one, the right. one that I sent you on Vimeo. Uh, but, yeah, I think they might all be up on Vimeo. Let me see. I'd have to look. Sure here. Let me sure. Make sure I've If you can read the titles, because unfortunately I can't see it on the screen. Yeah, I'm trying to double-check to make sure that I've got the right ones here. 
Uh, what video is this? It's a... Uh... <laughs> Uh, there's one that's 29 minutes and one that's 10 minutes. I now I'm forgetting which one's which. The 29 minute one, I believe, is the is the COVID one. Okay, which mistaken. one? You yeah. want to play the other one though? You want to come uh, back to the COVID one? Sure. I, which one? I which guess. one? Which one? Was there something particular you wanted to start out with? Uh, I, I guess the 10 minute one, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of that, if you jump to the end of that, you see him outside the courthouse, and that's okay. where he makes that allusion to Martin Luther King and so on. All right, that's right, quite right. interesting. Yes, it is. Okay. So I'm going to jump into that one, and uh, this is the 10-minute video, one of the new videos, and, you know, there's this activity all over now where they're posting a bunch of videos, but uh, mm -hmm. this is... This they're is, releasing a lot of footage. Yeah, a lot of stuff that uh, they have not uh, put out before. All of a sudden, the ICGJC is dropping, so it's been uh, very, very K fascinating. Very fascinating. Listen up here. Chaos, if you remember in the letter, was specifically mentioned everybody. So uh, let's see if he talks a little bit out of here. Um, if you just go to the uh, uh, meaning of the, of the word chaos, uh, it means uh, complete confusion and disorder. So chaos. Hold on. Those crowd sounds were fake. Yeah, I think the, so. Well, the, yeah, he's that, alone in a room in the video. That was really strange. Uh, so I've watched most of the other video. I haven't watched all this yet, so I did not see that till now. I don't know if you guys caught it. That was super weird. They they had him alone in a room, uh, like like LL Cool J staring at the wall. I don't know if his conscience was calling, but he's got these canned sounds there of a, like a, a raving uh, crowd, like they're all about about it. That was strange. What was he talking about? He was talking about the rulers of darkness in his place, in high places, in their organizations, their organizations, the CIA and the FBI. If you know anything about the FBI, the FBI job was to destroy all so-called black radical organizations and prevent them from gaining membership and getting large in membership. The rulers of darkness. So chaos is the rulers of darkness, including the CIA and the FBI. And remember, again, they were mentioned specifically in that letter. They were mentioned specifically in the letter that we looked at in the beginning. And uh, the idea was they're happy by this. Now, remember, this video is being placed up in this way now afterwards, right? Okay. And so the point by saying that is, is that, um, this is something the organization wants you to see that they believe is currently important. Chaos and his demonic forces of darkness may think they got the victory, but we know the war is far from over. That's the exact statement. Let's continue on with this. Let's see what goes here. Da, da, da. All right, that's fine. We're a minute in here. Nobody is free to leave the FBI. Okay, first thing I'm going to tell you to tell is tell the FBI to stop being conventional. Tell them I said it. Tell them to look up the conventions. Okay? Tell them I said it. What you mean by that? Tell them I said it. The age that you came in council? Make sure you tell them, brother. Don't forget. Tell them I said that. That there's nobody. Okay, so in this video. This is where a person who is in bad standing in some way with the congregation is brought to what's called council. And so this man whose face is blurred is being brought to council. And in this, uh, Tazadakia is speaking to this man as if he's an FBI agent telling him to pass a message on to the FBI. The funny thing is, or let me say ironic thing is, is that uh, I hear a lot of other Hebrews like groups saying that Tazadaki himself is in bed with the governmental powers, and that's why he's doing what he's doing. And so, uh, you know, was this man, uh, you got pots and pans. Uh, uh, since you can be heard now, that can be heard. Uh, I'll temporarily mute you unless you want to comment on this. But that's what's going on here. That's afraid of the tactics. So this is a video that's been put up since his, his death, or at least being promoted since then. Church. Okay, so let me explain here. Um, first of all, uh, 
Yeah, Sweet Tea, it is a little hard to understand because the music is much louder than um, the music is much louder than the voices. Now, what they're doing is playing different clips, and they're in essence saying, uh, at least the implication, right? Uh, I'll notice that all other organizations have been shut down. So I, oh man, I feel I got so much to explain if I'm going to do this for everybody. What is being said? And Abu, again, anytime uh, you you can comment. What what it seems to be implied by this video, everybody, is that COVID nineteen took out Tazadakia. It's sort of a, an assassin flu, basically. And so that's that's what's going on. You, you guys you guys seeing this? You guys understanding this? And here it says all of the organizations have been shut down. Now, ICGGC may think that they're um, you know unique, but uh, this is something that almost every Hebrews Light One West group says all the time. They always say the government successfully pulled down Malcolm and Mark and then Garvey, and they go through the list, right? And then they'll say, but, but not us. We're still here. We're still here. You know, or that's going to happen to us too to an extent, but we're going to endure to the end. You know, you hear things like that. So that's what's going on with this video right now. So they're trying to basically, you know, portray this like uh, sort of in this larger battle. And you can see that by the original letter. Wait, I do want to hear what he says here with this supposed informant. Now, I doubt that this man's an informant. Okay. Same here. That's just their paranoia coming into play. Number two, tell them I said this. That everything that they try to do, nothing is working. Number two, tell them I said this. Everything they try to do, nothing is working. Well, listen... If COVID-19 is created by Esau to destroy Israelite communities, as Tazadaki is going to say later on in this video, I guess some of the things they're doing will be successful, according to this, this logic. But there's a certain level of egomania in all the One West groups where they think the FBI is really on them. I kid you not, everyone, okay? I'm not trying to make a joke here, but let me look into the camera. This is a true story. Just today, the homeboy Laron... G-Con is a funny dude. Laron G-Con. He was kind of getting on Hebrew Israelite because this Hebrew Israelite was being disrespectful and pestering people. And Laron was basically saying, like, you know, maybe if you had a job, you wouldn't have so much time on your hand. Why don't you get a job? You know, this is not the way I approach things, but Laron does what he calls uncut urban apologetics. And even if I don't agree with his approach, it's pretty much always funny. So he's saying this to this guy a lot, and he's saying, you know, get a job. The guy literally posted... You know my situation, LeBron. You know I can't get a job because the FBI, and I'm paraphrasing the post, the FBI <laughs> is monitoring me and 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 making it where I can't. And he and LeBron knows this. And I was like, this this can't be this can't be serious, you know, but mm -hmm. but uh this is real stuff. So let's see what he says here. And now they gotta worry about what it is that God is talking about. Now they're going to worry about what it is that God's going to do. Now, see, this is sort of everybody um, saying that God's on their side. So ISUPK is going to say Tazadaki is dead is because, you know, he, the Lord wasn't dealing with that camp, and now they're going to get taken out. That's what the other One West camps have been saying. I mean, I've been watching these videos, right? Uh, Tazadakia is saying to the government, hey— the Lord's working with us. You better watch what's going to happen to you. I've seen a lot of Hebrews like say COVID-19 is part of one of the judgment of God upon the United States for being wicked. So everyone thinks God is on their side, and ever, whenever something bad happens to any other group, they say, here's another example. So now Tazadaki is saying they got to worry about what's going to happen to, to the government because of me. And I have heard ICGAC members say, point to various things, the troubles the United States have had here or there, right, and say that's, that's because of the persecution of Tazadakia. Because this world is not a man. It's a so chaos is not a Hebrew Israelite One West thing, just so everyone understands. Chaos is a specific ICGJC thing. It's specific to their group and their organization. Chaos. So he mainly talks through chaos through this whole thing. Abu, any parts besides the end that you think are important to get to in regards to this particular... It's on, it's on here... But I no, currently the, have the, the volume the turned down. I think is on a different video, actually. Uh, yeah. All right. Let I me let me see here. Let me see. I'm gonna go to the end here. See the what he says. That is dominant and the one that will rule uh, and succeed this world. 
um, then that means that that's in direct opposition against one another. And again, what is one of the meanings of the word chaos? Kill all opposing sides. Chaos, so he, he's got a backer in them here. Again, this is a common thing with these kind of do-it-yourself um, kind of city cults. Uh, Nation of Islam always does this. Five percenters are big on this. He's doing this. Chaos, kill all opposing sides, right? Uh, sounds like it could be like a, a 90s hip-hop group or something, right? Uh, so here's where we go here. So that's what he's saying. Now, uh, that was important to watch. We are approaching almost 200 people watching this video. Shout out to everybody watching. I want you to know that if you're a Hebrews light, we love you regardless of what you think or say. Uh, but we also want you to act cool in the live chat. The mods will let you know what's up. And the same thing goes to Christians. Christians, we hold you to a higher standard even. Okay, so I'm going to go to the COVID-19 video, but Abu, you're going to have to tell me, was it the part four video then? Because I just, played, the, part, the, I just played part one, I thought, or I don't know. What know the, the power is coming, wait ye on the Lord, part three. At the end of that, they show him outside the courthouse. Okay, I'm going to have to look through that. I, I don't remember so having the link. They have about one. six videos on their website right now. I mean, I could send you the clip. No, no, I'll go to the website while we play this. I'm going to play the COVID-19 video yes, because yes, I don't have that. the other one downloaded. And um, whenever I play a video... Uh, from uh, the, the, the website, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm starting here in the beginning of, of this video. So we're playing different videos that have been recently put up by the ICGJC, the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ, since uh, Tazadakia's passing. And we're going to learn a lot by the various ones, especially uh, this one, if, if it decides to work. Uh, let's see here. You gonna decide to work or not? All right, I'm having some problems in the video again. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna see. Let me let me mess around here. Don't do this. I hope it doesn't do it in the middle of the show. All right, Abu, we're gonna have to do this a little bit backwards. Tell people what they're gonna see, or if we get to this video, what it, will they be watching, my man? If it's the COVID nineteen video, it's him. Mm. It's a very recent video. I would I don't know the exact date, but I date it to late February because he talks about Purim coming up. He alludes to Purim coming mm -hmm. up. Uh, it's him discussing COVID-19. He says that it's a uh, a virus created by Esau, and he's telling people to take it seriously. And th in that sense, it's a um, it's quite the foreshadowing to the unfortunate uh, end that he met. All right, here we go. The title that was Prophecy Now. I didn't, uh, a lot I didn't go to. Uh, briefly, it. while we're playing this, can you speak a little bit on what he is wearing? I think that would be important for people to understand, because uh, not all Hebrew Israelites dress like him. And by the way, if you want to know what ICGJ Sim members look like, that's that's the way they generally look, the red and whites, unless they're uh, higher up. Oh, oh, also, and I want to talk about how we got different schools represented here. Abu, break a little bit of that down, if you could. Okay, so, yeah, so right away you see there's a school oh, right is there. Uh, in and out by satellite, they bring in shots of his other congregations. So yeah. they'll show shots from the Philadelphia mm -hmm. school, from the Camden, New Jersey school. Uh, they go to Nebraska, uh, Columbus, Ohio, uh, Oklahoma City, and uh, and maybe a few yeah, other spots. Oh, both the... Miami and Orlando. So they show – you get the sense of what the congregations in other states and cities are looking like. Yes. Do I understand that? And that man is Esau. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I missed a very important part if that's... Yeah, he just said it now, yep. For those of you that made that Sabbath, you know we was dealing with a lot of different uh, things, talking about prophecy, what is prophecy, um, um, what is being uh, done by God, what's being done by man. Um, one of the things we, uh, the Spirit wanted to point out was uh, the coronavirus on how that was not... A plague from God, but that was a a, a, a man uh, designed uh, pestilence. Do you understand? All right, so this is fascinating. I'm going to play the main part here, but a few things. Notice, first of all, he's not at the same kind of conspiracy theory who denies. COVID-19 is even a thing. So he recognizes essentially the validity or seriousness of it as far as a uh, the medical considerations go. However, in regards to its origin, um, he doesn't specify, you know, I don't know if he gets into 5G tower stuff or anything like that, but he does say that it's created by man, it's man-made, 
You know, and that uh, he's going to say in a second here, it's Esau that made it, which I'm going to play here in a second. So this is a fairly fairly re recent video here, and uh, this is part of his perspective on it. And we're hearing what he has to say, say and this is, uh, you know, it's, it's very uh, odd to watch because you know that that's what's going to uh, take out, take him out uh, in just a matter of a couple months. Um, so here he is speaking about it. Uh, Abu, other commentary. I'm going to replay that clip as, long, as well as the punchline as well. Go ahead. Uh, no, that that's that that's. It's, oh, by the way, regarding the outfit, that's the, also the same outfit that he wore on uh, January 28th when he went to court. His last court appearance, in which uh, apparently there was a verse from I think Isaiah 54 on the back, and like the prosecutor brought it up as apparently in, indicative of his lack of remorse or as indicative of a, of a subtle taunt or something to that effect. Yeah, do you remember the exact part in Isaiah 54 that it was? Oh, I don't. It's, I think it was Isaiah 54, 15 or something like that. But as the story goes, apparently the prosecution brought it up that it was, you know, as him sort of taunting the court, hoping the court wouldn't notice. And his response was to say they put the wrong verse on his garment or something like that. That was, so. that was pretty epic because, you know, he, he wore this garment in court when he's in trouble for embezzlement and things like that and tax fraud. And we're not even really getting into that. But uh, I believe that um, <clears throat> Isaiah 54 you know, uh, says a few things. I forget which verse it was exactly, but if you got verse 15, for example, uh, you got, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Saying just what he said in that other video where he's supposedly addressing an FBI informant. He's saying, if you if you strike me, the Lord's going to strike you. You know, uh, that's, that's what's being said there. Now, um, uh, when the when they brought it up, the prosecutor basically saying you don't have remorse. You're rocking this verse. We looked it up. He said, oh, they put the they put the wrong verse on there. They put the wrong verse on the garment. And that was pretty bizarre. That was uh, that was uh, pretty bizarre. That was a low moment. Now, brother Sam, the homie Sam Miguel, <laughs> he is in the live chat. Shout out to you, Sam Miguel. I appreciate. I think Sam Miguel was one of the first people, if not the first person, who, who I heard this from. I said, hey, Todd's doc is dead. Then I looked it up and looked on some things, and he knew pretty fast. And I encourage you to watch some of his videos on it. Now, I don't agree with everything he says. He's an atheist. One day, hopefully, he'll be uh, more, uh, you know, saying not just a brother in humanity, but the brother in the Lord. But he does do some great work and research. And he actually uh, showed on a recent video of his the court documents where Todd was being very deferential to the law in this statement that he made. And actually, you went to page 71. One San Miguel uh, of the PDF of the minutes there of this actual final hearing. So that was incredibly fascinating there. And so shout out to San Miguel again. Miguel, hey, you have full. Um, if you want to drop that link where you actually got into that, because if people want to do more research, they should definitely turn to you when you read those court minutes. So drop mm. that link, brother, uh, if you can, if you were in, into that and want to drop that. And uh, and uh, psh, 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 what else we got, man? I'm about to play some more of this because I really want people to hear this. But thing, now I'm reformed. So saying it's not from God, it's man-made, I'm like, mm. it's, I'm trying to figure out, where, do they have the same kind of predestinarian strain as like the IUIC or the uh, GMS? Uh, I, I can't tell where he's at with that. Abu, do you know much about no, that? No, I, 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 I think it's it's with the exception of GMS. With most of these guys, it's usually very vague that they don't uh, they, not, they don't take a very IUIC. firm position. I hear you, yeah, yeah. but IUIC will say we're just acting out a script. They're almost deterministic, almost um, more than even just predestinarian. It's kind of a almost a. Uh, almost a fatalistic determinism, which I understand some people accuse Calvinism, but I wouldn't agree with that because I'm a compatibilist. But I've heard IUIC say things that almost sound like a fatalistic, deterministic type of position. I know GMS has as well. Mm. And so, well, I'm sure that the ICGJC would at certain points say that everything that's happening is going according to God's plan. So right. they I would just, fall with that in as well. But I've never seen any of the groups really lay out a full uh, – Attempt at reconciling, you know, the, their belief in free will with God's uh, divine foreknowledge and God's decree. You. Well, let's hear what he's. I want to play this again. Everybody, listen closely to what he says here. This is in regards to COVID nineteen, and again, this is the man who was leader of the Israelite Church of God in Jesus Christ, the original One West School with a different name. He died April first by COVID nineteen. Here he is speaking on COVID nineteen before his passing. The spirit wanted to point out was uh, the coronavirus. 
on how that was not a plague from God, but that was a a, a, a man uh, designed uh, pestilence. Do everybody understand? And that man is Esau. <coughs> okay. So everyone, in case you don't understand, he just said the white man created the coronavirus to kill people. We're going to play a little bit more of that. Here we go. Um, Esau is uh, he engineered uh, different type of diseases as a, and weaponized them um, to uh, uh, destroy his enemies, um, his warfare. Um, and uh, the coronavirus is one of those things. Went through some scriptures to show how um, if it's a plane coming from God, how you know the difference? Okay, the ones of you that was here. Uh, last time in that uh, uh, that class was that last week? Because the week seemed long now. Okay. So um um you see people done went crazy. It's been a week. Okay. Since I spoke. Okay. Right. Um, show you him. But yeah, some, some of y'all uh, um you you're not up on what's actually going on. Like there's all kind of spies in here. Y'all wouldn't believe that they listen. Okay, you, you just, just don't, don't believe, believe that. that. Um, not, not the spies, but the, the higher, uh, um, the rulers of the By the way, of uh, a few things I want to point out. Uh, everybody, do you see right here on the, what is my left side of the screen here as we pause this video? Do um, you see my little cartoon logo with the arms folded and it says Street Apologist Live? Right above that is Aria. <laughs> That yep. is Aria. If you've watched this channel at all, we've discussed Aria being the one who really popularized and brought forth, claiming that it was from the Lord in both instances, both Lashua and Quadash, which is the Harlemized Hebrew they speak. That's my term, not a booze, which is really not a legitimate, historically verifiable pronunciation of Hebrew. Aria also... When uh, sometime in the between the 60s and the 80s brought out the the fuller version of the 12 tribes chart, which says, you know, if you're Ephraim, you're Puerto Rican and if you're Mexican, you're Issachar and all that. Again, just to show you how embedded ICGJC is as far as having the pedigree of being the real one West school, Aria is sitting there listening. And often, you know, he doesn't have all the elaborate titles that Tazadaki has. Tazadaki has greater titles than him. And he has to show deference when he says, now introducing the God sent comforter. Um, and so this is very fascinating. And yeah, Sam Miguel points out that Aria has made claims of angels visiting One West, which I brought out in the beginning, everybody, of the video I played to start this off. Uh, do you want to comment uh, to explain what's going on? By the way, what's that video called? The, the, is it The Power is Coming? Wait Ye on the Lord? Is that the one you want me to Yeah, play? part okay. three. Part three right, at the right. end of it. All right. Because got... there's three of those. And so the part, the third one at the end of it, about 24 it, minutes in. Okay. Has to be uh, what is being said by the prophet. Do you understand that? Okay, so. And, uh, the bottom line is Esau has been trying to um, uh, prepare. It's about readiness. He's been trying to prepare people for um, some kind of uh, virus um, for a long time now. Okay. Um, to see how the people would deal with uh, the population of the people would respond to a lot of people dying. So, so that's, that's what, what the preparation's for. for. How would the population respond to a lot of people dying? Okay, so they, they tried it with Ebola. Um, that was a test to see how they would, res would respond. Um, I wouldn't really call it a test. Um, it's more so how the people is responding dictates to them what they're going to do next. So even with Ebola, based upon the response, that dictated what was going to happen next. Okay, if the response is what they wanted, then they would have let they would have unleashed Ebola, um, and had to kill a whole lot of people. Okay, which is another one of their design diseases. Um, swine flu, y'all remember that? Okay. Um, again, how the people going to respond to people dying, um, on whether they're going to unleash, um, it to you know uh, destroy um, a lot of people. Um, uh, swine flu, um, then they got bird flu, then they got Mars, 
I think they got SARS too. Y'all laughed last time I said that. Um, a lot of respiratory, uh, you know, design diseases that they do to jack jack up your respiratory system. Everybody got that? Um, now they got uh, the coronavirus. Okay. All right, so is this the time that they're going to... You know, I, don't, I don't really care, okay? I'm not really... I don't. I don't really care. I'm not really concerned with um, whether they follow through with their plans or not. That's not the issue. It's not prophecy. It's not the word of God. The, the bottom line, the issue is their intentions. That's the issue. Their intentions is to kill um, a whole lot of uh, Israelites. That's their intentions. And that's always been their intentions. Do everybody understand that? So there, I, I wanted to bring that out. By the way, I owe everyone a freestyle because we got over 200 live viewers. If uh, there's some super chats, I've missed them because of all the stuff going on, but I'll try to get back to them and let me know, uh, Mod Squad. Now, with that being said, um, notice there what I was saying earlier. He is saying COVID-19 was engineered by the white powers that be specifically to kill brown and black folks. Now, it's fascinating to see that in the beginning of this, we had a lot of people like Dante. It gets cut off right there. Fortson, also known as Dante, 400 years Fortson. Also known as Dante calls every woman he meets Ratchet Fortson. Well, Dante Fortson was saying, uh, if you notice, this is mainly hitting Europe. It's not hitting our communities. And so this is evidence that it's a uh, plague against, uh, you know, the, the wicked power structures who are not Israelites. Now... You have him, you know, I'm just saying these are conflicting voices within Hebrew Israelism. You've got him, uh, he's saying, not now, but you understand what I'm saying as we watch this. You've got uh, Tazadaki saying this was actually designed to target against minority communities, as they are called, which I'm not a big fan of that term. Which is interesting because um, now that's exactly, it's, as far as numbers, it seems like there's uh, greater challenges there. When it comes to certain communities in the United States, and there's a variety of reasons for that. And this is so it's all um, very fascinating to see, you know, everyone has their own different interpretation. By the way, Abu, I'm trying to find that video. I'm having a little bit of trouble. I'm still I'm still working. on. Oh, it's part three, right? Yeah, part three. Okay, part okay, three. okay. okay. I got it. I'm going to get it. Abu, you want to comment while uh, you want to comment on that, though? Uh, no, I mean, that pretty much sums it up. I think you hit it right on the nail that one interesting detail here is that he's saying that it's designed to kill uh, Israelites, people who appear on the tribe's chart. And mm -hmm. uh, at least at present, the news is saying that uh, precisely the communities that appear on the tribe's chart are being disproportionately affected. If that's true, it's very sad. But uh, I think some members of his church would treat that as if as prophetic if they came across that. Right, even though, and former members have pointed this out to me, right around this time, specifically Passover 2020, Tazadakia said that certain things that the ICGJC had demanded in their last march on Washington, which we briefly covered, by the way, uh, that unless they were, those demands were met, that certain judgments were going to be enacted against the United States by Passover 2020. So it's ironic that Passover 2020 is about when he got taken out. And yet he was saying that's when the United States will be judged uh, if they don't. And by the way, the main demand was to release all the, the prisoners in the prison system who are Israelites. That was the main demand. Basically, I think they're trying to do a modern day in their mind, let my people go was the kind of idea. And if the government doesn't do it. That uh, this is going to happen. Do you want to comment on that, Abu? I don't know if you. Well, know yeah, no. About he was that. predicting a second exodus for a while. He's been yeah. talking about that, the second exodus. That's all. Yeah, and it's sad because obviously, you know, this is around the time. Look what happens to him. But uh, I hope. I mean, notice. Uh, you know, I don't know what else to call it other than the strong conspiratorial tones in here. But I'm going to continue on hitting play. Here we go. Play button. By the way, shout out to um, what's what's the the sister's name. Who uh, has a lot of good information on her Facebook, Abu? I want to give her credit. Kendra, actually. Kendra Aris. So I'll, I'll write her, her right. name in the chat. But Kendra, Kendra Aris, Aris she, is the one who pointed that out to me. I see someone giving me credit. Shout out to you, Eddie. But just so you know, I did not come up. That's that's Kendra's uh, observation, and I asked her about it. I asked Kendra about it, and, and, and I thought it was a fascinating thing that she brought out. She's very knowledgeable about these things and has a lot of good information. So she deserves the credit on that. The way I would say it is she's uh, – while her tone is somewhat polemical, she is very much like a sort of independent or unofficial journalist covering uh, the insides of the ICGJC from the outside. 
Yeah, yeah, her tone is definitely different than a booze. I remember she had one post where she said, uh, you know, COVID-19 can be especially frightening. This is background information to what I'm about to say. To people who have uh, pre-existing conditions or underlying conditions of some sort, autoimmune diseases, where the uh, system is compromised in some way. And uh, Tazadakia was a type 2 diabetic, so he would have qualified as that. So even though he was 44... Uh, that could explain some of what happened. And she said, now we knew that the Holy Spirit had been on medication for a while. Now, again, that's not the way Abu would say anything, but but uh, that, that is the way she put it. She was referring to Tazadakia in regards to that. But uh, I'm going to continue playing it on, but shout out to her. If, if, if this, this is, is the time, time that they're, they're going to unleash it, Based upon the, the readiness of the people, because the people are responding in no ways. I, I didn't see them respond like this to Ebola. I didn't see them respond like this to the swine flu. You understand? So they responded in a way as if they are almost hoping that this coronavirus go crazy and, and kill a whole lot of people. That's why they're getting ready and prepared for it. So it might be just what they're looking for. Um, um, you don't have to worry about that. Ariaz clapping, notice. Notice, by the way, everyone, the children there. Is this Camden, Abu? Oh, I, I can't see it at the moment. Uh, it's the one where there's uh, the clear dividing, and there's some fans in the, and there and there's a divide down the middle, and they're on white chairs. It's got the little little girls on the front row with, and um um. Let me see. I'll pull uh, it up on no, my end. It's, it's, and like it should say it's right at the bottom left. It'll be given away oh, at the bottom yeah, left. Yeah, I can't tell. I, yeah, it looks like Camden. Okay, I Camden. thought that was Camden. I think that's Camden School. Uh, I know some people were saying, oh, look, they don't really have that many people there. Well, okay, first of all, they have been hemorrhaging members. Uh, this situation is not going to help. The uh, legal troubles didn't help. There, there's some truth to that. However, guys, understand, there's little girls there. You see, you see what I'm saying? These little girls are being taught that the leader of their church, former now, uh, was the Holy Spirit made manifest in essence. You know? And uh, they have multiple schools. In fact, in my hometown, Columbus, Ohio, I think it's one of the smaller ones, but they have, you know? So, you know, uh, continue on. I want to play this. Here we go. Uh, playing this. Uh, this is a show, the Camden School. And, uh, um... um the, the fact, fact that they're trying to kill blacks and Hispanics and uh, it's going to hit if, if, when things are released, whenever they... They, hold, they can't hold it back for long because that's prophecy. Prophecy is they're going to try to kill Israel. Okay. Christ made the statement that it would be, if he don't cut the time short, um, then it would be no Israelites to save, no flesh to save. So basically, he's like saying, uh, this is the time of Jacob's trouble and COVID-19 might be the, uh, you know, the one of the one of the ways that, that Esau is sort of inadvertently filling prophecy as they target this disease. Uh, so th the reason why this is especially interesting, because to reiterate, Tazadakia, Jermaine Grant, the one they call the holy God-sent comforter, died because of complications due to COVID-19. So it's pertinent to hear his comments on this. But this also gives you a flavor of what happens behind closed doors with a lot of these groups and the way that they speak. Because uh, even the groups who don't agree with you know some of the titles he's given to himself would actually have very similar conspiratorial tones going on. And so it's important to realize. And again, there's our uh, co-signing everything. It's talking about Israel because he's not saving all the flesh. It's common sense, right? There's the racism, by the way. He's talking about Israel because he's not saving no other flesh. Now, that's fascinating because as Sam Miguel pointed out in his video called Tazadakia's Testimony, Tazadakia several times, ladies and gentlemen, refers to what he was brought up in as a hate group. He calls One Westism a hate group and said that he had tried to fix it because his conscience bothered him and he knew it wasn't right. You can read this in the minutes, and Abu says that that kind of line actually goes back farther even before the court document minutes. But let me reiterate. Mm -hmm. Here is the man at the helm before he died, the flagship of the legitimate One West school, the one that the other ones broke off of. He is saying, I was raised in a hate group, but I've been trying to fix it. And yet, notice, he still makes an ethnic claim in regards to salvation. Abu, speak on some of that, my man. 
Yeah, no, I I do. Well, as you pointed out, it goes back that line where, you know, oh, the group was a hate group wasn't yeah. just for the court. I encountered him saying that way back in 2005 to, uh, you know, a complete small fry. Nobody even like me. He was even they were even saying that, that, oh, it used to be a hate group, but we're moving away from that. Now, of course, the doctrines that they've maintained would still fit the popular understanding of a hate group nonetheless. But I, I do believe that he has been trying to grapple with this, like even though we can easily point to things that would make us believe there was a lack of sincerity in that statement before the court. I think there is a, a modicum of, of sincerity there insofar that I believe there's been signs that he's been grappling with this. I remember in years past on multiple occasions, he flirted with the idea of that great and uncountable multitude in Revelation 7 being Israelites from other nations who look like the other nations. And it seemed to me that he was doing that to sort of flirt with the idea that they could bring in people who aren't on the tribes chart. Also, now this is going to sound like a strange bit of gossip, but I remember encountering a person way back in, I think, 2007, who had a Korean mother uh, who said that he was told in private by the leadership. He didn't say Tazadakia, but still, the leadership. <coughs> that if you Sorry, wanted, maybe. you could treat your slaves nice, hypothetically. Yeah, that no one said you had to, you know, that you couldn't treat your slaves nicely, and therefore he could, his own mother could be assigned to him, and he could treat her as nicely as he wants. Now, I know that's a very strange statement, but I think it's indicative of the attempts to grapple with these things, to recognize the problems with their doctrine and try to maintain it and yet move away from it at the same time. I think they were pulled in two different directions. I think he was legitimately of two minds on that subject. Yeah, here we go. Uh, okay. so no flesh to save, meaning the believing Israelites. Um... If he, he don't, don't cut, cut the time, time short, according to prophecy, we know that he's, he's not looking to save any other flesh. flesh. Okay, um, he's gonna destroy all those fleshes. Okay, everybody. He's not looking to save any other flesh. He's gonna destroy all those fleshes. If people wonder why I deal with Hebrews and lights, there's lots of reasons, but one of the reasons is right there. It says this is the Bible, and then goes on to preach racial prejudice ethnic discrimination, bigotry based upon the way you look or your background. That's not the Bible. That's not the gospel. That's something to come <clears throat> front. That's one reason why. Continuing on. Yeah. All right, so um, um, it's, it's going to hit, hit the black and Hispanic community the hardest, mm. um, people that's not in the truth. Um, but uh, they also try to, uh, the purpose of them trying to get the people that's not in the truth is they don't know who is slated to come into the truth. All right, so there is a predestinarian strain. Let me interpret this to everyone. I know Abu could do this as well. What is being said here is the government is especially going to attack minority communities, number one, with COVID-19. Number two, it's going to have an especial, a special effect on people who were deemed to be Israelites. It means on their 12 tribes chart, according to One West. It's going to especially hit and attack and hurt those who are not in the truth, those who do not recognize they're Israelites, say they're stuck in Christianity or Islam or something, it's going to especially take them out. And the, the government's doing that because they don't know who's slated, meaning set up or predestined to wake up to the reality of who they are. Did he explain, Abu, why he believes this is going to especially hit non woke israelites more i didn't hear that unless i missed no it. i didn't i don't hear him explaining that we can only guess i mean maybe it ties in with their whole two-thirds doctrine right. i don't know but then that's of course incredibly fascinating because of course it got him continuing um, on the truth, the truth is, is under attack, attack. okay and, and under by no means necessary can israelites, israelites come back to god, god. Um, because, because that, that would mean that's a threat to the national security of every nation on the planet Earth. According, According to prophecy, when Israel come back, they get put in slavery. Okay. So Hebrew Israelism is a threat to national security. All governments of the world seem to be aware of this reality, he's saying. Because when Hebrew Israelites wake up to the fact of who they are, the other nations will end up in slavery as the awakening happens. This is Hebrew Israelism, everybody. This is one less Hebrew Israelism. Tazadakia may be dead, but this doctrine lives on. So regardless of whatever tinkering changes he went about or calling the group a hate group as if he didn't sign on to these types of belief, there's Arya, a main promoter of the doctrine a generation ago. One of the young men he influenced was Jermaine Grant. Jermaine Grant went to usurp his teacher's own authority, and now here you go. 
ago, and this lives on. So ICGJC may be on the decline, but IUIC is right there, ready to pick up all the pieces. So are the other groups, and no one knows the future. When you try to predict what's going to happen with any given uh, of these kind of cultic groups, you it's very difficult to do. And so we don't know who's going to ebb and flow. We just watch and pray and be active and interact. Shout out to Kate. I see my man in the live chat, by the way. So, so under, under no, no circumstances, circumstances can Israel, Israel be allowed to come back. back. This, this is where all the aggression is coming from. from. Do everybody understand that? Uh, um, the established Israelite, Israelite Church, Church of God, Jesus Christ, by any means necessary, is they've been trying to destroy it. Um, they failures um, added. When you, when you try, try to destroy, destroy something that's still around, what does that mean? You, you failed at what you was trying to do. Right. 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 No, no matter how much persecution comes, the whole point of that is to destroy the organization. Right. And if and the organization is still strong and established and you're still around, around what happened? happened? You, you failed. failed. That's, that's the point. Point. All right. He's talking about them because remember, they've had been having, he's been having legal troubles with the government and is about to go okay. in. Not, not the, the Black, Black Panthers. Panthers. We're not, not the Black Panthers, Panthers that don't work on us. Okay. We're not the uh, black, black Muslim, Muslim organization. That, that don't work, work on us. What you, you did to destroy them, don't. don't if you tried that, it didn't, didn't work. work. Okay? okay. Everybody understand that? Oh. The, the civil, civil rights movement, that's not us. us. Okay? okay? Everybody, Everybody got, got that? that? Um, we, we still prevailing. We still surviving. Everybody, Everybody got, got that? Now that deserves a standing ovation. It shall, shall be pleased. pleased. So, so because, because the goal is to kill blacks and Hispanics, um, and they don't, they, you know, so they can wipe out the uh, the Israelites that's supposed to be coming into the truth. This is nothing new. If you if you pay attention to the Word of God, you pay attention to history, you pay attention to prophecy. By the way, I think the other man on the stage is Shar. Is the other man on the stage yep. there? Uh, You're Shar? precisely right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that's Shar. Uh, just wow, it's. Uh, Fascinating. Here we go. What, what they, they do, do when they started, started killing, killing all the babies during the time of the Israelites that was in ancient Egypt, what was the whole point of killing all those children? Because they were looking for one. They were looking for one. If I understand that, they were looking for Moses. They, they, under no means, by no means necessary, can we allow that child to grow. There's a prophecy about a child, so they pay attention to prophecy, okay? Like you should. There's a prophecy about a child, a deliverer, kill everybody at, at this age range. Everybody understand that? They came back and they did it again during the time of Christ, right? Um, it was a prophecy about the holy child being born, the king of Israel being born. What did they went, what did they went to do? Slaughter all the kids, right? Um, but they, again, they couldn't stop Christ from being born and being uh, coming, becoming what he was and what he is. So the whole point is, who's behind the Gentiles, the things which the nation sacrificed? They sacrificed the devils. It is echoey. I'm trying to figure out why that is. Uh, I hear the echo. Someone mentioned the echo. I hear that echo. I don't like that echo. I'm trying to figure out why that echo is. Uh, have not got it yet, but I'm, I'm working on that, everybody. Uh, don't know why that is. Okay, um, so we're nine minutes in. I'm not going to play this whole video, but uh, Abu, there's a spot you wanted me to get to. At the end, I believe. No, not at the end of this. It was the other one. I mean, the, the, you've covered most of the significant ground here. Uh, I think it's uh, the, well. I mean, no, there's the, there's this is the one where at the 16 minute mark he has that very vulgar segue where he talks about that reminds me of a joke and you, you see these women in the but that's sort of irrelevant. That's neither here nor there. It's just bizarre. But um, no, the other one, the the time and what must be done, part three, I think it was titled. That's the one where it'll show him outside the courthouse, and you'll see. Uh, I'm sorry, the power is coming. Wait ye on the Lord. That's what it is. Part three, and that's the one where he's outside the courthouse. He jabs at Martin Luther King. There's uh, Shar and Ariar there applauding in the crowd. It's 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 very interesting. The footage. And that's also where he talks about how he has to go through what Christ went through, somewhat vaguely. Oh, man. All right, I'll play a little bit more of this. No, he does not have an effect. Uh, it's, it's, it, has to do with, it has to do with something on my end where this is a strange echo. I'm trying to figure it out. Let me play a little bit more to see if I can figure it out here. Hey, you believe in a, a God of wrath? Con, con, con. Yes, I do. Yes. Why do you believe in the Word of God? Like it's, like it's irrational. Like, why do you believe in America? That's irrational. Yeah. Why do you believe that a man can marry another man? Right, 
I mean, don't make no sense. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You look for where you ain't gonna bump into nothing. Oh, okay. Forgive me for that one. That remind me of a joke. Three faggots was in. There's a woman uh, in the congregation a few seconds later. I think she's in Camden. And she, her mouth is agape. She's so surprised. Yeah, so I just going to stop it right there and uh, let the, the YouTube powers know, be that we are analyzing a video uh, live on the spot. And uh, this is um, uh, not our content. We are interacting with content from ICGJC. Okay, I think I figured out the uh, echo. I'm sorry about that. I didn't realize uh, that, uh, everybody. Now, let me go ahead and flip into this other video and see if I got the right one. This might take a couple times, a couple doing here. Uh, but imagine going to, uh, just imagine being a you know part of uh, this kind of thing. It's uh, very, very... all right. Uh, where do I need to put this one, Abu? Abu? Are you with me? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just before the 24th minute, so around 2350, something like that, you'll see him outside the courthouse. All right, yeah. All right, so... All right, so here is ICGJC, and then in their own video, they show a clip of him outside the courthouse, and uh, we're going to play this, and I'm going to let it go because I'm going to have to turn myself down. I think that's been part of the echo, so here we go. It's going to go down that's going to make the nations know that they've been lied to the whole time, okay? Um, us being put back on top. In order for you to fulfill prophecy, you got to walk in the steps of the prophets. Oh. Right. Oh. That means you got to go through what the prophets have gone through. Oh. We have a doctrine of the second exodus. Right. Before that power comes, the one that God has chosen to lead us out with the power of Christ has to go through what Christ been through. Christ was arrested. He was taken by night. He was taken to a false trial. He was in a courtroom full of blasphemies and false accusers. Now, I can't make this happen now. <laughs> <laughs> And Shah are actually also here. Arya has probably got to be maybe about eighty years old, and uh, here he is. Almost outside. exactly, yeah. He's either if he's not eighty, he's seventy nine. He's yeah. he's right there. He's most likely right about eighty now. Yeah, and um, you're gonna see him. Uh, you're gonna see him clap along with everybody else here in a second. I was trying to. Trying to get right on it. Now I kind of lost a spot here. But yeah, it's that same garment. And as you pointed yep. out, Isaiah 54, 15 on the back there. And that's what the prosecutor noticed, which he said was an accident. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put, so the Aria laugh. I mean, it's it's really sad. It's almost like the villain who tells bad jokes. And everyone's got to laugh and clap and stuff. And so there's Aria and Shah uh, right there. Uh, there's Arya and Shaw. Uh, Natalie says, why are their heads covered? Well, according to them, their heads are not covered because each one of those head coverings, Natalie, has a small hole in the top. And when the men leave forward, you'll see a little hole in there. So they teach that their heads are not actually covered. Just want to point that out really quick. And it's 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 part of One West history because One West, uh, you know, was big on turbans for a long time. And they sort of inherited the headdresses in general from the other Israelite groups that were around them. Uh, including the turban from B'nai Zakin, but also even just the headgear in general from uh, 
from the commandment keepers, that's where the tradition of covering their heads comes from. But then in keeping with uh, Paul's epistle, which talks about not covering their heads, they, as you noted, they would put a hole in there. So that's their attempt to reconcile the New Testament with the tradition that they inherited of covering their heads. It's covered and not covered. Uh, so Arya, do you know his current title? Is he st- He's still a high priest, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's even uh, Apostle and Chief High Priest, if I'm not apostle mistaken. Like and chief multiple high priest, Chief yeah. High Priests, yeah, but it's certainly Apostle and High Priest, yeah. San Miguel, an ex-member of the ICGJC, says that's because they teach that the Spirit comes through the head. Okay. Uh, what what do we know about Shar uh, besides he was a seven head? I know it's not a lot, but can you share anything you know about Shar? What kind of guy is he? What did he add? No, very, very little. I mean, he's always been a guy who's, I mean, he's certainly not one of the most prominent of the of the heads. So, no, I mean, the only thing I could say is that every now and then you hear guys talk about his generosity in the old school, you know, and his kindness. But other than that, no, I, I, I know very little about him. So Char is him. kind of like the seventh of the seven heads. And by, by that, I mean the least known, uh, you know, the one we don't hear much about. We, there's just not a lot of information and uh, not a lot of video of him speaking that I've really ever seen. It's hard to even find him in video. Obviously, he looks different than he used to, so you might not be able to match the two, you know. But there is Char. He's uh, the right here. And it's interesting. Abu says the one thing that you do hear about him is that he was generous and kind. Uh, seems to enjoy a, a good joke, I, I guess. I'm going to continue on here playing this. I need to turn myself down. Stop. Who, who in their right mind would want to make this happen? <laughs> but if the shoe fits, you got to wear it. Yeah. And prophecy is fitting like a glove. We have nothing to be ashamed of. This is not the end. This is the beginning. You, <laughs> this is going to be corny. <laughs> but it's the truth. Uh, so I got to you as a people is going to make it to the promise. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the false prophet that made that statement, I'm not going to tell you that I'm not going to make it there with you. Right, right, right. God has chosen me to lead you to that promise. no matter what the details is of God's will is. And what happens today, understand that that's not the end. Right. 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 Because I got to lead you to the promise. Right, right, right. 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 Stop, stop. Right. Stop. Right. stop. What you see, no matter what the... Wait, was that Prince of Egypt? Yeah, that was a, that was from the Prince of Egypt soundtrack, which is appropriate for Passover, I suppose. I know, but, but I'm sorry. Oh, first of all, this video is getting a copyright content flag. Thanks a lot, ICGJC. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to laugh here. Abu, that is funny. Bro, that is legitimately funny. They slowed it down. He's walking slow motion. All you need is, like, some breeze to come in at that moment. You know what I mean? And they're... They are playing a song for the Prince of Egypt soundtrack as he walks. I'm sorry. Come on. Okay. Okay. So you I, caught that. We, it, it, you knew that because what? Your daughter uh, or you just love the movie yourself? Or? I love that movie. And it's funny. Just this this year we showed it to our daughter. Yeah. I love that movie. But, uh, okay. Hold I on. Made, hold on. What, what, ahead, what, scene, what scene is it from, Abu? Uh, it's, it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's right before they leave. That's the, the song. uh the, there can be miracles if you believe. I think the title is If You Believe. Okay. Now, first of all, I'm going to play that part again because that is just... <sighs> Abu's going to explain it, but let me explain it, and then he's going to explain it, and then here we go. Well, certainly the part with Martin Luther King also. He doesn't mention by name, but yeah, touch on it. So that's a, Mar- that's a MLK Jr. diss because MLK said, and it sounds prophetic when you listen to it in hindsight, he said... We're going to get where I'm talking about. And what he was talking about is 
uh, this vision, this dream. But I may not get there with you. I may not be around to see it realized. Yeah. But there is an unbridled optimism in MLK, and uh, obviously he's still a man. And you know, he there's times where he didn't feel the unbridled optimism. But and he's saying it's going to happen. And then he says, you know, I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen. So he's using these biblical illusions where you know Moses. Uh, was able to see into the promised land, but he wasn't able to go in himself, right? Uh, until, interestingly enough, just a little bit of biblical, you know, during the Mount of Transfiguration, when he met with Jesus, he was in the promised land there. Actually, fascinating stuff if you realize the Mount of Transfiguration, there's Moses. Go ahead and break it down again, because I'm going to rewind so, that and play that part again. Abu, go ahead. So, yeah, it was... It was Martin Luther King's uh, speech in Memphis, Tennessee, his famous I've been to the mountaintop mm -hmm. speech, which interestingly was on April 3rd, 1968. April 3rd, as you covered, is also the date that we first heard news of Tazadakia's death, although his death was apparently on the 1st of April. But yeah, April 3rd, 1968. And yeah, Martin Luther King had said, uh, I have seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. I think that's what it is. I have seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. Now, Tazadakia was... He's part of the One West spectrum. One West has a long history of calling Martin Luther King Jr. a quote-unquote false prophet. And Mar that's why they like said, to call him gonna, Martin Lucifer King Jr. Or they also like to call him Martin Luther, and instead of King, C-O-O-N. These are the two words they call Martin Luther mm -hmm. King. But go ahead, bro. And so that's why he says – he doesn't mention King by name, but he says, I'm not going to say what that false prophet said, yeah. you know, that I may not get there with you because I am going to be there with you. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, also, I, and this is a bit of a segue, but very quickly, as you covered way back in 2016, the, the hatred for Martin Luther King amongst Israelites predates One West. It was a non-One West Israelite who even killed his mother uh, out of driven by hatred for him. But yes, that's we brought that up before. Again, reiterate, a non-One West-style Hebrew Israelite assassinated Martin Luther King Jr.'s mother as well as a number of other people. He did it in church. He did it in church. I don't. I remember Marcus Chenault. Marcus Chenault, I believe, was the young man's name. Mm -hmm. Chenault. Yep. And at the time, he actually had a dorm room in Columbus, Ohio, at Ohio State University. All right. So uh, we're gonna play this part again because, listen, guys. Arya said Yahweh Shai was gonna come back no later than 2000, 1999, 2000. Switch over. False prophecy. False prophet. Uh, false teacher, clearly. You got things like Lashawan Kodash, 12 Tribes Chart. You have Jermaine Grant continuing that on, you know. Uh, if the government doesn't release the prisoners by, you know, Passover 2020, they're going to be judged. Didn't happen. That's one of many. Now, here he's saying, I'm going to get there with you, Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, what, what do you do with this? I hope people come to Christ out of this. Let me play this again here. This is tough to watch, honestly. <laughs> but if the shoe fits, you gotta wear it. And prophecy is fitting like a glove. We have nothing to be ashamed of. This is not the end. This is the beginning. You, <laughs> this is going to be corny, <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth. Uh, so I got to, you as a people, is going to make it to the promise. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the false prophet that made that statement, I'm not going to tell you that I'm not going to make it there with you. So, MLK is a false prophet. I'm not because I'm going to make it there with you. Do we have ICGJC members here? Uh, what's going on? Lift Every Voice says, what part of what you are doing right now is not slander and libel? You know libel is prosecutable offense, right? 
Uh, lift every voice. Are you an ICGJ Sim member? Are you um, who was able to come out of the woodwork? Because I know you guys weren't able to interact with us during Tazadaki's reign. What is going on? Who else would be having such a vociferous defense? And uh, I find it corny and lame. Lift every voice. Unless I'm misunderstanding who you are talking to and what you're saying. And in which case, I'll apologize because sometimes when I try to read the live chat, I can lose track of conversations. Um, what you're doing is corny and lame. You're You're saying if we play the ICGAC's own videos and then comment on them, we should be prosecuted. You know, is, is that, or that you're going to be, that's how you are? That's what you got? It's weak. It's weak. Like, for real? Playing the video, commenting on it. Joel Separation says, MLK was a fool. He right. I'm really tempted to have you timed out, Joel Separation. I'm really tempted to have you timed out. Yeah, let's time out Joel separation. Let's time out Joel separation. Yeah, we're going to time him out. But uh, come back with every voice. Comment. Bring it. Tell, tell us what's going on. I'll read your comment. Oh, uh, you know, let's see what's popping up. K oh, oh, K-Dub wait, wait, wait. says oh. BHI always want to sue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. BHI always want to sue. Oh, lift every voice has another comment. Wow, how creepy is that? Spying and stalking another community. Because you don't agree with their religious beliefs, shaking my head. But never would he do a thing like that against the Khazarian false Hebrews. Lift every voice. You're singing a song that's been sung many more times before. It's a sad song sung by jesters who cry. It's a song with a tiny violin to accompany its sad lyrics, sombros, morose, melancholy. And here you are singing that same tune, just with a slightly different lyrical structure. Lift every voice. As you lift every voice and whine and complain and bring about really odd accusations, which are very ironic as well. Lift every voice. You know why? Because here you are spying and stalking on me. How are we spying and stalking when we're playing videos that are linked on the front of a public website? This wasn't secret information. I didn't have to be a government agent to get this, lift every voice. I just went to your updated website and clicked on the link, and now I'm playing it. This was also done outside, in case you didn't notice, on public property. So in case you didn't notice, nothing is secret about this. No one needs to spy or stalk anybody to play this. And yet, here you are in the live chat. SMH, SMH right back at you. It's not it's because funny. we don't agree you said that right at the beginning with the, of the religious... Video, you said Sorry. It's not because you don't agree with the religious beliefs. It's because ICGJC is a false prophet organization. It's a false church. And Tazadakia and those who prop up his teaching are false teachers. And now we're showing he's a false prophet because he's dead. He's not getting there with them. Go ahead, Abu. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say it's interesting that right at the very beginning of your show, you played a clip of you outside of, you know, on Madison Avenue saying that if, if you're in public, you don't have an expectation of privacy. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, very fascinating. Uh, so, lift every voice. I don't know if you have any more comments, but um, it'd be fascinating to see. My guess is you are an ICGJC member because he, normal non one West, I'm sorry, normal one West and certainly non one West Hebrew Zites are not going to defend Tazadakia. They're not going to defend him. And in fact, they're a lot more harsh than uh, Abu and I would be in our criticism, even if it is post-mortem. But to be fair, we also did pre-mortem. I don't know if that's actually the word, uh, criticism as well. But uh, so you, you guys see this? You, you guys you guys see this? I mean, this is kind of, it's also mind control, you know, right there, uh, you know, just boom, right there. <sighs> All right. All right, let's, let's play this a little bit here again. I want to play this. Has chosen me to lead you to that promise. Unlike the false prophet that made that statement, I'm not going to tell you that I'm not going to make it there with you. Right, right, right. God has chosen me to lead you to that promise. No matter what you see, no matter what the details is of God's will is, and what happens today, 
understand that that's not the end. Right. 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 Because I got to lead you to the promise. Right. 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 Stop, stop. Right. stop. I've got to, I've got, yeah, turn it off. I've got to lead the you to the promised land. Though. So, uh, yeah, I'm playing just uh, audio, audio lists here. Um, Abu, what say you, my man? I, I mean, as you said, there is a certain sadness to this. It's unfortunate, um, but like you, uh, we saw the the jab at Martin Luther King, the calling him a false prophet, the claim that he'll make it with them. I. Now, the thing is, the ICGJ and C themselves posted this, so well, they don't quick, see this as damage. Uh, uh, lift every voice. Usually we don't allow people to swear in here, but mods, let's give this um, ICGJC member a special privilege to let their true colors fly real quick. I want to make sure mods do that before they time out. Lift every voice. Don't imitate this, Hebrews Lights, because uh, we won't let you get away with it, but lift every voice being an ICGJC member. Uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Answer the question, dang hypocrite, and stop being a smart A. You are slandering a whole community like a coward. Why not go to their faces and say all this? You are a coward and a creep. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I understand maybe you didn't come to, the, you weren't here in the beginning of the show. Lift every voice. I get that. But uh, lift every voice. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna kind of put this in your face. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna put this right in here in your face. We began the show by playing a video of myself and two or three other brothers in front of 1941 Madison, there in Harlem, New York, literally right there at the door, doing a miniature Bible study showing how the Bible is against the school's teaching. I taught briefly from the book of Colossians right outside, didn't engage them until they came out and tried to tell us to stop. We're bothered by us doing our little miniature Bible study there. Then we had a conversation in which the man tried to, why well, he didn't try, he put the camera, he put his hand in front of the camera, th uh, threatened to, 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 us basically he was going to call the cops and we need to turn off the footage we weren't allowed to do it all this kind of stuff and i just kept on and guess what i asked him i asked him this very question and i read from john i said if the comforter is tazadakia how do you explain the fact that he won't always be with you and yet the comforter will always be with you i did not know uh last summer when i did that that then Tazadaki would die of COVID-19, but that's why I played that in the beginning, because I asked that question. It's especially pertinent and relevant now. So uh, I will gladly accept your apology, because you're saying I was a coward, and I why not go to their faces and say all this? I was literally in their face, and part of the reason is because they got in my face, and he tried to touch us. The set is, you can't see it all, but this part where I say, what are you doing, dude? It's because he's trying to get, he's he's trying to grab the camera, grab my phone, getting in our face. This is what happens. And uh, and I said, physical intimidation is not going to work forever. I said that. The reason I said physical is because he was trying to physically intimidate us. So lift every voice. Um, glad to have you. I'll just go ahead and wait on your apology. And I really appreciate your apology when it's coming as you lift every voice and say to me, Vocab, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Abu. <laughs> that wow. I'm not sure where to go from there. To <laughs> I've got it. Fred Sanford's making a great point. I'm gonna sue you. Lift every voice because that's slander and libel. Because you're lying about me. I'm sorry, ma'am. Okay, uh, go ahead. Yeah. But what I was going to say, based on that last uh, comment that you showed, he might not be a member of the uh, ICGJC because he seemed to tread into that territory where just mentioning, you know, One West is somehow to slander the entirety of the Israelite spectrum, you know, to, to just pretend like we never know, make any, to pretend as though you never make the distinctions, you know. I don't know. That was the impression I got from that. Yeah. All right. Let's watch this without the sounds since they're playing the Prince of Egypt soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and by the way, the on those, I don't know if you could see it, but on those boards, uh, on the handwritten placards they're carrying, it says Mene, M-E-N-E. -E. That's uh, from uh, Daniel. Oh, really? Yeah, and that was found sort of another... weighed and wanting. So it's obviously a prophecy against the United States government for the persecution of Tazadakia, correct? Yes, yes. Now look, much, yeah. hey, I'm cool if you want to take this trek, you know, to the ICGJC. If you want to say, hey, 
prophecy against the United States, you know, many, many, you know, all that kind of, okay, take that track. But don't be showing up in your minutes of the court documents talking about, I made mistakes and I'm guilty as charged and I realized what I did was wrong and I was in error and I'm, I'm, tr because those are two different things. If you're going to say you were wrong, then actually you're saying you, de you're declaring yourself guilty, saying I did something that was wrong. And now he pleaded ignorance primarily in this. He said he was ignorant of the law and all this, but he says, I admitted I did. I was wrong. If you're going to do that, that's one trick, but you can't then turn around and say Isaiah 54, 50. 5415, oh, they put the wrong thing on there. By the way, I wonder what verse it was supposed to be then, if that's the case. And then have these mini signs. So, I mean, come on, come on, man, come on. Go ahead. And interesting, by the way, uh, that King James onlyism will cause proponents of Lashawan Kodash to pronounce uh, Mem Nun Aleph as Mene rather than Mana A or something like that. It's interesting, the, the interplay there. But yeah, it was a reference to Daniel 525 uh, and 526, where. It's interpreted as meaning your your king that God has numbered your kingdom, right? Yeah. Has been found, has been weighed and found wanting. Hey, if I do decide to uh, sue any ICGJC members for the lander slander and 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 or, or and or libel, I always forget which one's which. Um, maybe I could hire a good Ashkenazi Jewish lawyer like Tazadaki did. Didn't he hire a Jewish lawyer? Oh uh, yeah, well yes, they did. Uh, yes. Okay. I don't know about for this time, but yeah, certainly mm -hmm. in the past they had uh, some uh, whatever. I mean, I don't all know. right, this show is going to go uh, a tad bit longer because, guys, what I want to do here is show you a little bit of the secular. There's uh, Shar, by the way. Shar is yeah, yeah, I saw. Yeah, show you some of the secular uh, news coverage uh, of this. <clears throat> and again, not that we would agree with the way that this is said or anything like that, but I'm going to show you here. Um. In uh, the what is it called? Uh, oh, DailyMail.co.uk, one of the mainstream sources that actually has picked this up. And let's look real quick at what they say. Leader of Black Separatist Church in Harlem, who stole millions from members, dies after brief illness. But lawyers say it is unclear whether he had coronavirus. Now the lawyers say that because they're lawyers, but of course the church uh, had no. You know, they they directly said what it was. As well as uh, apparently, jeez, um, I hate this site so much. Like maybe, is there a reading view on this I can do? <laughs> like, uh, is there a, how do I, how, this is a, there's just so much, so many ads. Jermaine Grant died in April 1st after suffering from brief illness with lawyer Gerald Lafcourt said that it was unclear whether it was COVID-19 related. Israelite Church God and Jesus Christ leaders claimed on social media that the 44-year-old died from COVID-19 in January. Grant was sentenced to 18 months of federal prison after he admitted to using church funds to boost his living conditions. That's putting it wildly. Grant is said to have had his children driving in school and chauffeured Mercedes Benzes from their home in New Jersey. They misspelled Mercedes there. He and a co-conspirator are said to have diverted more than $2 million. That's Warrington, who I mentioned earlier, from the group's coffers and failed to report more than $5 million in income to the IRS. That's pretty serious, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let's take a look here at this. The leader of a Harlem separatist church who siphoned millions of dollars in tithes from members has died at the age of 44. Jermaine Grant died on April 1st after suffering from a brief illness. But lawyer Gerald of Court said that it was unclear whether his client died from coronavirus. Mr. Grant did pass away last week, Lacour said. We cannot confirm whether his death was COVID-19 related. All right, continuing on here. Uh, Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ leaders did claim on social media that the leader died from COVID-19, the New York Daily News reports. It's a tremendous loss, no question, and unfortunately due to the current restrictions put in place. Okay, we already read that. And uh, this is the school I was at. If you watched the beginning, you watched, saw the video, unlike Lift Every Voice. In January, Grant was sentenced to 18 months of federal prison after he admitted to using church funds to boost his living conditions. He did say he was guilty, by the way, everybody. Persecuted said that the father... And a co-conspirator, church treasurer Lincoln Warrington, used money from the church to buy property, vehicle trips, and private school tuition for his children. Grant is said to have had his children driving to school and chauffeured Mercedes-Benz from their home in New Jersey using phones from the church. According to the court documents, Lafort praised the former church leader as a devoted, committed father, and a spiritual leader and religious leader. But former Israelite members painted Grant in a different light. So these are ex-members here. Let's see what some of the ex-members say in this. All right, I only wanted to repent, admit his lies, but you can't mess with God like this for too long. A former follower said on Facebook, "Oh, that was that was her. That was uh, 
What's it? Kendra. Kendra. Kendra, yeah. yeah. Better to be humble always than perpetuate lies in the name of God. Grant and Warrington are said to have diverted more than, okay, why do they repeat this? I hate mainstream media. It's, it's church members required to donate 20% of their monthly earnings. When the FBI raided the church in 2018, they left the building with crates of money. I actually didn't know that. I knew they left with tons of documents. I didn't know they took a bunch of their money. Incredible, huh? Did you know this? Is this right? I, I, I only recently became aware of that claim. It's an incredible claim. It's, I it's, did not know this. This oh, so I I have I skinned this article, Abu. You know because I sent this article to you. Uh, if you remember, well, I know I sent it to Sam. I don't remember, but, but anyways, like uh, I didn't know that the FBI left with crates of money. I mean, I knew they lived with a bunch of documents. Wow, okay. Inside us from here, the church said that Grant was still active in running the church until his death. I feel bad for those affected by his death, said Barry Pugh, a former church member and a whistleblower who was prepared to testify the prosecutor for prosecutor. But he didn't repent. He lied to the congregation. Everything he did afterward was to lie to see the congregation. These are quotes. Uh, the Hebrews Light Movement was created in the end the of the... Get your st- what is wrong with you guys? This is a p- publication. It's a, you're supposed to be in the UK, so you should know English. What? Come on, people, get it together. Real quick, in that video extends you extends well. Let me just read the last paragraph. Extends well across the United States with some several hundred thousand members, according to the ADL. There are many sects which refer to okay, the ADL, blah blah blah. Okay, go ahead, bro. What are you saying? My bad. Go ahead. I'm listening, man. Yeah, sorry. No, I was saying that in that video you played where he was talking about coronavirus. At some point, he says when they. That when the FBI came, they loaded up uh, an 18 wheeler with stuff that they took from the church. He said they even took cameras off the walls. That's he literally says that in the video. So he acknowledged they took a lot of stuff. He that certainly doesn't corroborate the claim that they took money, but yeah. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. New York Daily News. Coronavirus suspected in death of Harlem cult leader whose church requires 20% ties. Hmm. Yeah, the the print copy of the Daily News was especially in. Uh, I got screenshots. Especially uncharitable with yeah, the language. I'll show the screenshots here in a second. Uh, let's see if there's any. He was sentenced in January to 18 months in federal prison after he admitted to using church funds to personally enrich himself. Died April 1st. His prison term was scheduled to begin later this month. Okay, let's see here. Female members line up outside of the Israelite Church of God and Jesus Christ on Madison Avenue in Manhattan on Saturday, April 27, 2019. So that's about a year ago. Uh, this is a lot of repeating here, so I'm not going to read all this. But better to. Wow, so they just. I hate the. I hate reading uh, the. Uh, you know, stuff because they just they just repeat themselves. Insiders said the crates were stacked from floor to ceiling, guarded by a 24-hour protection detail that operated inside and outside the church every day. Hmm, there's 1941 Madison. And notice they got the identity doctrine right on the windows there. Playing back by biblical. Ah, see, see, this is the problem, man. It gives it gives the Bible a bad name. Let, let read this paragraph, everybody. Church membership requires a verified referral and a monthly payment plan backed by biblical brainwashing. Insider said, attendees surrender their cell phones at the door and swear devotion to a man who called himself the God sends comforter. All right, we've got lift every voice back. It says that dude is running his mouth. Without having a member of that community here right now to defend themselves. That's foul. He's here bashing a community while down. Shane on all of you. Lift every voice. Um, Tazadakia felt free. And so does the ICGC to badmouth the church, the Christian church, often. Without any Christian church members present. So your criticism against me on that tip is is very thin indeed, number one. Number two, notice in the beginning of this video, uh, which is an earlier video I put out uh, uh, last year, I was directly there face-to-face with multiple members. They had actually outnumbered me, uh, and none of them wanted to talk. He told me I was dismissed off the public sidewalk. He did not want to speak. So when they had a ch- when I had a chance to talk to them about John and the, the, the Comforter doctrine, they did not want to speak. And so uh, what's up with that? You know what I'm saying? And uh, let me ask you this. This is the last question I'll ask. Uh, no, I'm not saying last question ever, but let me ask you this. Um, would you like to come on the program? I can give you my Skype. Lift every voice. I'll just give it to you right now. And if you if you call me, I'll pick up right now. It's at vocab Malone. I don't mind giving my Skype out because if anyone calls and bothers us, block them. I don't. You don't have to answer Skype calls. There's, you know, it's easy to. But uh, it, all you got to do is download Skype, 
there. All you got to do is download Skype, lift every voice if you don't already have it, and call them and, and, and message but at vote for Malone, or tell me yours and I'll call you. You could actually come on right now. If that does not work, you tell me and I'll give you a Google voice phone number and I could put you on cell phone right now and we could talk to you because if that's your complaint i'm willing to take that complaint right away from you and speak with you if you would like okay so um insiders i feel bad for this let me see here oh this is fascinating they include this the church was also once the worship home of david anderson and francine graham the killers behind the deadly anti-semitic shooting spree in jersey city in december during which they gunned down a jersey city detective and shot up a kosher market killing three before shooting it out with cops anderson and graham were later found dead inside the store and they actually show a picture there from that wow in 2013, the church ordered action figures casting Grant's image, but sued the toy manufacturer because the dolls weren't black enough. That's true. Now, listen, I've said this a number of times. In Tazadaki's defense on that one, those dolls were lightened up. They got the Michael Jackson treatment pretty bad. And so uh, I actually, I don't know all the backs and forths of what happened between the ICGCC and the doll maker, but uh, they were right. Although uh, I'd be willing to pay top dollar if I could get my hands on one of those dolls because I guess a number of them do exist. I think they sold them for like... 80 bucks or something like that to members but let me know if you're willing uh and uh, we could even dress them up with 12 inch gi joe clothes could be a very fascinating experiment and again i know boo's not down with all this so ex excuse me you can bow at any time but uh i'm not saying i want you to but uh there's that okay so with that being said abu i'm going to show a few more things and then i think we're calling night and lust lift every voice is going to come on understood understood but, but, but let's hear some final words for you, my man. No, that's it. You pretty much covered it. Uh, that's <laughs> it's it's a, it's a very unfortunate situation. But uh, as uh, San Miguel is noting, in terms of the harshness, now I, I think we said at the outset that we're not that lift every voice has accused you of gloating at his passing. We're certainly not gloating. We're not uh, taking any joy from his passing. But in terms of the language, while we're trying to be charitable, at the very least, as you noted, it's and as Sam Miguel has noted in the chat, our language has been a lot more charitable than Tazadakia's was when he was discussing the passing of the leaders of other groups. Uh, Hulan Mitchell, the, the the man who went by the name Yahweh Ben Yahweh, uh, the church, you know, uh, had quite a bit of harshness to say as they mocked his passing, dying in prison from cancer. Uh, and then also Pope John Paul II. Uh, they, you know, there's a, there was a famous DVD of him, uh, a room full of uh, congregants laughing as Tazadaki said that uh, he, that Pope John Paul II was getting punched in the mouth by Apollyon as he entered hell. You know, so yeah, so that they certainly haven't shown the charity to the leaders of other groups that is being demanded uh, of you at this precise moment. Not that you're being as harsh as he was, though. <laughs> yeah, I'd be curious uh, what uh, ICGJC members would say about that. But again, I have not seen uh, the ICGJC member who is active in the live chat. I have not seen him say he is willing to come on. But I am very willing and waiting and looking for the comment. Have I missed it? Anybody, wow. have I missed it? Any comments there? It's absolutely shameful you all support a dude gloating that a man passed away and using that as an opportunity to push some moist propaganda. Very weak sauce. Well, I guess it is weak sauce if it's moist. Go cover the gay parade instead. Well, not Yeah, this is why I don't think Lift Every Voice is necessarily a member of uh, the ICGJC. It seems like that this is sort of the common theme, What you know, just the general misdirection. L look away from, from Israelites. Go look at the... Ashkenaz, go look at the gay pride parades, go look at the Catholic Church, you know? Yeah, but that's what they yeah. all say. And I, they would yeah, say that. Yeah, standard faith. I don't know. I have, I, have a, I have trouble imagining it. Standard Hebrews like being so vociferous in their defense of Tazadakia. But, you know, you might be right. Uh, it is standard fare, but, I mean, it's almost like they read from a script. Now, you're willing to type in the live chat with every voice, but you're not uh, willing to come on or... or I mean, oh, oh, here we go. You lift every voice. Why are you being so predictable? And I and honestly, I, I say this with the utmost respect and love to you. Why? I mean, yeah, I have fun, but I'm not, you know. Look at this comment. I want to meet you face to face. Bring boxing gloves. <sighs> I mean, is that is that what you like for real? That's that's what that's where we're at, right? 
This is what I'm saying, guys. And this is clearly a muted or toned down version of what Lift Every Voice wants to say. But notice here, threatened to be sued, you know, all this other stuff. And then it comes out with, let's meet up face to face and bring boxing gloves. <laughs> Just, uh, uh, I, th I thought you guys were waiting on God. I thought you didn't get down like that. I thought, yeah, no more talk. Lift Every Voice says. Now, Lift Every Talk, you were telling me um, that there needed to be a Hebrews Light representative here on the panel to speak. And now you're saying no more talk. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what it is, Lift Every Voice. I, I, I have no doubt that if you had a chance to physically harm me in a serious way, you would take advantage of that opportunity. No doubt in my mind at all about that. Uh, your spirit and vibe, attitude is clear. Your intent is made obvious. Uh, so there's not a question about that. I understand that. But um, honestly, what this shows, and I say this all due respect, consider what you're believing, Lift Every Voice. Because, you know, it's funny. Your name is Lift Every Voice, and yet you want to lift every fist. You're saying no more talk, let's bring boxing gloves. You started out by saying you wanted a representative here. You didn't think I was going to say, okay, come on and Skype or Google a uh, voicemail number either uh, with video or with just voice, and, and you can represent. And so instead of doing that, you're talking. When I did that, though, here you are, and you're saying, now you want to you wanna put a hurt on me, basically. You know, that's what you're about now. No more talk. But you were wanted to talk about uh, talking before. But now when talking is afforded to you, that opportunity, you just want to fight somebody. This shows how weak your doctrine is. It shows how bad it is, and it shows how limited a lot of Hebrews lights are able to respond to criticisms of their position. And, um, I mean, what do we so, what do you so say about this? You know, I find it fascinating because Lift Every Voice, do you know what that song is? That's not a Hebrew Israelite song. That's something from the church, man. And here you are. You want to lift every fist, or as my man Basic in the live chat says, you want to lift every excuse as my man basic says in the live chat or as my man justin martyr says what you want to do is quiet every voice unfortunate sad i think that's the note we're going to end on abu final words uh, no i think we covered it all it's 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 quite an interesting subject it's a sad subject but this is where it is, and we'll see where it develops. The most interesting thing is to see where this church is going to go from here, in which direction they're going to evolve. Will they go through a split? We'll see. And maybe you'll be there to cover it. We'll see. It appears that uh, even a fellow Hebrew Israelite has a level of agreement here with the show. Judah the Lion says that's where we at. Vocab, with all due respect to this brother who passed, you're on fire tonight, and it's because the one apple can spoil it for the whole bunch. And someone who would also appear to be here, like the elect of Israel rise, says carnal as hell. And I think I know who he's talking about. So it's not a good look, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a good look. Well, um, this is the part, Abu, where uh, I apologize for embarrassing you. I want some embarrassing you, you know. But uh, you can, yeah, I don't know, I just want to encourage everyone to pray for the folks caught up in this, uh, caught up in this, you know. And uh, I also want to tell, uh, lift every voice, like my man Fred says, it doesn't really sound like you're respecting social distancing, you know. It just doesn't sound like it. Uh, but with all that being said, I do got to end with a freestyle produced by my main man, Justin Martyr on the tracks. Because we had over 200 viewers tonight, and so that's how we're going to end this show. And uh, Abu, thank you for joining, man. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Here. Good night, and God bless. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's see if this joint works right here. Now, you guys, you see this spiritual warfare. I mean, I hope you guys see this. This is, this is no joke. It is no joke. All right. Here we go. Oh, come on. What is it doing that for? Oh, is it not going to play it? I've been having sound problems, so it might might create a problem here. We'll see real quick here. Esau is messing with my controls. Man, that's just popping. All right, let's see here. Let's try to get this freestyle popping. Can you guys hear it? <laughs> 
Make the mark like an assassin. Here we come again, gonna have a blasting. Blasting, asking, stealing the cash in. That's what he was doing if you ask him. FBI, do they lie? I don't know, sometimes I try to figure it out when I read the paper from the paper boy in the route deliver. Make you shiver, shoot it like an arrow from a quiver. Here we go, nasty like liver. It's false doctrine, so I'm blocking it like a lineman. Now I'm watching from here to Boston, maybe Austin, Texas. Hey, I ain't got a Lexus like that dude. Oh, that was a Mercedes. I saw the church with the ladies. Hey, yo, you're going to Hades. If that happens, they don't pay me enough to suffer the fools. Hashtag you get timed out, taken to school, so you deserve. Here I come again, flipping of the ill word. Yes, indeed, I will read. The book of Colossians speaks on greed. First Timothy, as I proceed. Yeah, you get what I need. The blood he bleed. Christ he rose, a broken reed. The rose of Sharon, I'm sharing. Now the beat blaring. My name vocab, so don't call me Karen. Staring, ha <laughs> ha. Don't be sparing the oil, all of oil. Yo, got a hot like it would boil. Yes, indeed, Christ is royal. He's the king of Judah. Worship him, not ill Buddha. Statue, rap you, come after you. Like Acts chapter 2, I'm like crazy glue. Sticking to the beat, here we come. I freak, yes, indeed, when I speak unique upon the mic. The microphone, end of the show, gonna take it home. Flying everywhere like I was a drone. When I leave, I say shalom. Phoenix, Arizona, show, show, distance. Got the beat, now I'm relentless. And I mentioned this, I extend this. Like a 401k, I hit this. Going down like the stock market. This is the end, I didn't start it. But I read Genesis, and then I finish this. Here we come go. Let's end this.